prep it up. All right, all right, here we are, here we are. Back to YouTube Live. It's not like I don't want to be here because there's always something popping on this channel. And I want to take a moment here just for a second, you know, to let it stream, let it stream, let it breathe. It's going to be a minute um, for everyone to join the call for, you, for YouTube to, or Facebook to get the sanctions to put me on and, and all of this. So it's going to take a minute. And then when you do see this on, if you hear it, just type in the chat. I can hear it. And that will let me, you know, do my thing. If it's low, let me know because I can crank it up. You know, let's just. Uh, all right. So I'm waiting on you. I see some people already joining the chat. And uh, I'm just asking if you hear me, go ahead and hit that. I hear you button. Also, I know my it may like up from what I'm looking at on the preview. It seems like there's a little elongation on the head or something like that. But so I'm not no, I'm not sure if you're seeing that. But just so you know, there is going to be a HD copy of this available a little bit later on. It'll be on YouTube and I'll share it back to Facebook. So don't worry about it. Uh, also, if it breaks up at a certain point, maybe your connection start going out. You feel like, oh, they all against me. You'll get the archive later on. Don't freak out. Don't blow your day. It'll actually happen for you. And what's going to happen is major 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 stuff like I'm actually here right now to talk to you about something that I've done my due diligence on investigating and realize that for me to keep this away from those who listen to this message at all any longer it's an extreme injustice because they might as well go ahead and get started in their sovereignty fortifying that more and also getting solutions to actually getting the resources, the current, et cetera, needed to birth that fat ass projection you got of what you need in this reality to really, really get to your fulfillment and sovereignty. So this is where those resources will come from. Now, first and foremost, I do want to say I spent quite a bit of time also drilling deep into, OK, how do we solve this whole money problem, though, with the conscious community? You ask people for something, they feel like they're in church again, like they got a, I don't know, is it a scam? And what is this all about? And then, of course, you know, it's like making a, a living while you're also working to expand your consciousness is also a bit tough, especially if your job or whatever is directly uh, contrary to what it is that you've come to realize and come to understand. So. Because of that, what we've done personally is not only have we started Spirit Text, which is open source wealth, but we've also began to get into manufacturing. Like we are about to introduce some amazing products. Uh, FiAqua is one of those products that lets you program water. So we went in, from, in it from that perspective. Like what I, what I learned from my mother was she was like, James, is because we're not making anything. We gotta, we, once we become the manufacturers, then we will have part of our power back. So you got to remember that we have creative people out here that have massive ideas for creating things that will help humanity with all this knowledge that we've gleaned from our existence in this world. However, those people actually getting to the point of concept to creation is pretty difficult. Right. So the world is basically rigged. So, again, we know how to get through a lot of that. That's what we talk about. We talk about how to get the energy balance, how to get to that next level. And what that has a lot to do with is that has a lot to do with us connecting with ourselves, getting our filters clean, getting our consciousness expansion going on. Let me move this real quick. I'm, I don't want to hear any vibrations over here today. Let me, it's YouTube <laughs> or, or, or Facebook. You know, they're the same ones, actually. They're the same, same people. So anyway, what I'm getting at here is, is that when I put these massive projections together to build things like the resistance, secret energy, astral quest, the key maker, all the stuff that we've done thus far, it still got to actually get done. So the inner workings to those kind of things is what I spend a great deal of time doing. And I monitor the complexity and I'm like, man, if anybody else has got to be doing this, I can imagine even people who don't like using computers like what? would it be like I used to like using computers and now because of the, the conflicts, the problems, the connections and the technology and all that, it's like, man, I don't even like that anymore. I want to go to something else because they've overcomplicated it. They are causing confusion with the system. And because of this, it's been holding people up from their true potential. They've even gone into believing that these skin suits and these bodies is actually who they are. And they forgot about their power. And then because people can forget when people forget about their power, they become disempowered. So they think low of themselves. They think their value, oh, Lord, there's nothing special about me because they're not aware of their power. So this means that they can be sold for cheap. 
meaning this means that they can stoop low for what they believe is their true allotment. And then if they're not in the realization of the greener pastures they're basically what they say is uh, uh, you can never miss what you never had. So if they're never aware of what they actually had, then this buffoonery, which we're looking at going on in the matrix all the time, can continue. However, we are that vibration, that resonance that is disruptive to that. And so the reason why I'm actually having this conversation with you today is actually about one of the most disruptive forces on the dimension right now. Disruptive meaning that even the juggernaut, the big, you know, the Merrill Lynch's and the big, you know, uh, 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 let's say the Facebooks and all these different juggernauts have to even move out the way for something when it's not asking cryptocurrency which is this, what this conversation about is about. It's not asking whether people understand it or not. It's not asking if they could stop it or not. It's just coming through. And this is another thing. If you're listening to this conversation today and it gets a little bit tough for you to fathom what's happening, remember this, right? Or what I'm explaining, you'll get it. Don't think you're gonna get it all in one day. I'm gonna do my best to explain it to you so you can actually receive what it is here. That's why I'm gonna do some of the metaphysical aspects of it. But remember this. See, what happens is, is that you drive a car every day, but does that mean that you know how to break that single, that car down, drop the engine, open that thing up if it get wet, you know, pull the, pull the spark plugs? Do you know how to do all that? No, but you drive the car, right? So this is what happens. When you start talking to people about things like cryptocurrency, because they only see it as an investment, right away what they start doing is they go into their investor mode, the one they downloaded from the last program or TV show they watched. And then, okay, so I'm the investor now. So now if I'm going to invest, I need to know everything about it. So this would be like saying that now you need to know every single thing about this car. Now it's possible, but you have to realize like you don't know everything about how your money is working in the bank. You just think that when you go and you do your work, you do it, you get your, your outcome or excuse me, your income. And then you get your income, you go and take it to the bank, they cash you out. And then when you want to buy something, you either swipe the card or use PayPal. And as long as the money is there, your transaction is done. However, behind the scene, there's all sorts of stuff going on. In fact, most of what's going on takes days and days and days to even completely go through the system and say, oh, yeah, he bought a Snickers bar at the store the other day because that's how slow the system is moving. So basically middlemen, if you call it that, are floating all of that. Like they call it like the Catch Me If You Can movie with Leonardo DiCaprio, how you can float a check for three days and a little bit more so there can literally be a deposit. And as long as that account and those numbers are registering properly, that money is debited. And even if it's done by a Nigerian <laughs> on a check scam, it still doesn't stop it from actually registering with in the system and then clearing for a few days okay so this means that the system itself is highly prone to fraud and this is what I really want to get through to you today the reason we have so much loss in this world right now and mismanagement is because we literally have a vacuum and on the currency like this is our money it's our current our current and how it comes through has so many holes in it so many you know hey let's add another zero hey let's let's rig the entire thing since we own it let's it has so many of those holes that by the time it gets to you, that little low money, it seems to be worth so much, but there's other players in the game that have so much more, right? Like $40,000 a day on a, on a penthouse over in uh, 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 Four Seasons for the week. You see what I mean? With the boat, <laughs> that kind of expenditure. Why someone is also like, hey man, you know, can you let me use $10 so I can eat today? You see what I mean? So we have this huge gap and that gap is because there's a lot of loss. So today we are talking about how to basically close that gap, how to actually build the bridge. And because the new the new level of consciousness, because you got to even watch what you say. If I say a new world, people new world. Oh, shit. It's, it's Illuminati. Uh, so I got to come up with a new house, new house. Oh, I, I don't want to be inside anything. I live in nature, uh, a new new nature. Did. Oh, well, new na nature is a program. Nature nature still, too. It has a death cycle. OK, a uh, new. So now when you're talking to people, it's like all antithesis. So I'm just going to tell you just directly, there is a new plane, if you may, already built. Current is there and it has so much. It has more than people can actually even receive. And this is what we're going to be talking about is tapping into that plane because we did it spiritually. I don't want you to think it was because of the cryptocurrency and the AI robots and all that shit that this ended up becoming so. No, it was because many were in, under the impression around 2012 or actually around the time the tuning forks, them towers dropped. They weren't an impression that we were going into something massive because we were more awake 
Something happened. We call that the activation. Some went through it like a ripple effect. It went through across the dimension. I got hit with it. I'm kind of an early bloomer. I fell off the tree. So it was like that was the expanse and the process that we went to. And now what we're doing is, is we're bringing all of that information. And that's why this is called metaphysics, all that experience, all that wisdom. And we're bringing it into right now, here, right now in our world, right now, today. And we are actually saying, OK, well, how can I go from where I'm at right now all the way to the top? So this is what this is going to be about right now. How if you're paying attention, just like see something like this happened before the Internet. And many of us like I'm 38 now, like we've been online. So we know that this whole online thing started not too long ago. Meaning that I was actually alive when Prodigy came online, America online and all that started happening. And so just like any other person, I could have went and bought yellow.com, red.com. I could have bought that. There was nothing stopping me, but except for my knowledge and my wisdom. And that's why I say by lack of knowledge, they shall perish. So because you didn't realize why you were looking at He-Man or why you was doing whatever you were doing, that, hey, you could go right there right now and secure your entire pipeline to your future so that whatever you decide to do, you at least have the resources to power you through it but you didn't have it, right? Or some of us, even the older ones, they was even there. They was even watching some of their friends get involved in all sorts of stuff, and it just went right by. And then now that's like the twinge in the heart. Every time they lay down at night, they're like, man, I should have went with John and them and went ahead and bought neighbors.com. And then, you see what I mean? So it's like, it becomes a lot of regret. So we realize that if we just take the cream of the knowledge, the cream of the experience in the dimension, we synthesize, and we've talked about this for a long time, just synthesizing what is the truth? And that, that quirk that we end up with, that, that nucleus that we end up with, then we can use that, we can tap into that, and that's infinite power, okay? So for me to get into this, I first need to explain to you the, just the whole concept itself of money, so that way you get it, so you understand what it's really about, so a lot of this will make sense for you. So let's just understand that, in, like they say, in God we trust or follow the money, that for this segment of humanity, all of who, uh, basically everything that they've embodied, let me, get, let me get my terminology right here. The gods have always been money. <laughs> okay, this is the news flash for a lot of people. Like God is where people have been drawing their energy from, their inspiration from, right? So when people start getting hooked on to, well, that means more cattle, or that means more gold, or that means more computers, or that means more knowledge, that's actually what created the gods for different segments. So that's why even on the dollar bill today, it says, in God we trust. That's why when Caesar deified himself, he put himself on a coin, which means con, and that he actually became a god by putting his face on that, that gold coin. So... Let's look at the beginning. So we have more knowledge about this. This is not just off the dome. Hey, I'm just going to play with this story today. No, this is years and years of experience and even crossing into other expanses and, and making sure and confirming that that entire blueprint is correct. So when you look at the English language and you see this letter right here, which would be an upside down A, that this A is actually the horns of a cow and it is known as the Arak. OK, and. What Arak means is that basically the reason why it's the letter A is that that is how that, that is how wealth is accumulated during the time that this whole thing started with language. And if you look in those cultures, the Sumerian culture, if you look in uh, the Tibetan culture, the use and even in the Hindu culture, the use or the, the ancient oriental culture, the use of the cow was most instrumental because not only could this thing plow for you. You could also eat from it the milk and you could do so much with this cow. Like so the more you had. So then it was buffalo. Right. Like we're talking about aurochs. You got to go look this up. This is like the cow's great, 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 great granddad, grandma. And so that one is built totally different. It's like in the amount of consciousness it has. So people were connected to this and they actually even believed it was their mother. So even words like the moo and the moon. And then all the moon gods and then the crescents and all this became eventually associated with all the energy that people were seeing. They were seeing their crops come in there there. If it wasn't for these all rocks, then there would be no crop. 
And then, so your Auroch, though, is like stable. It's not like you can't really take an Auroch 100 miles. Like it's built to be there, that kind of body style, that kind of vessel, right? So the next level of it was the bovid, okay? This is your letters A and B. That's why it's easy as one, two, three. You know, this, there, there's, a, there's real knowledge going on behind a lot of this stuff if you know this occult knowledge. So the bovid meant mobile wealth because bovids happen to be able to be transported. They, they can pull for long periods of time. So what you had was his wealth, how many cows you had, determine how many wives you had, determine your allotments, determine everything. The rich man had a lot of cows, even all the way to Texas. This is like, see, none of these systems of current ever die. Right. They just remain as layers or planes or foundation under other ones. So even in Texas, those big, those old cow hand hicks, sauce hicks, they still know the power of that cattle and they've made money off of that forever. Right. And getting people hooked to it. Those go, those golden arches. So those were the R rocks. So that's where it began. And rather rapidly, we began to progress through what we wanted as money. Now, gold always was like this hidden now this hidden power okay because gold is for more than wearing necklaces okay let me just fix this for uh i got my brother life in the studio today he may say what's up when we close it down so obviously that the gold thing like is still in our soul like that gold like but you could do more than with gold than just put it around your neck the mystery with gold is gold is what's formed when planets are going through like the series A, series B, series C. And they get to a point where the yin and the yang start to get completely into a tight knit with each other. And then there's an explosion. And what generally comes from that explosion first or implosion is gold. And then that gold permeates throughout the reality. And because it's such a great conductor, you can actually tap into stuff with gold. Now, there's different kinds of gold. There's Ufaz gold. There's gold from different veins. So gold is like an antenna and our ancestors, ancestors always used it in that capacity. It wasn't just to be on the neck and all that kind of stuff, even though, as you know, a cat with gold in his mouth and gold all on his neck is, is touching it. But it doesn't mean that you could tap into it. Just like people touch money every single day. It doesn't mean that they know exactly what to do with it. So there's even an alchemical process that gold can be taken through and it could be eaten and to cause high levels of conductivity within the body, fulfilling one of the missing periodic tables of the body. But that's another story. Gold faced gods, those who worship the sun inside of themselves. So they were black from the outside because the sun burned from within inside of them. OK, so that whole empire was the sun still going on. Right. So then you then finally got into these bronze and iron ages. OK, so this is obviously time for war. Because um, gold, you don't make no, you know, bludgeon sword out of 22, 24, 23 karat gold. It's just going to bend. Right. So bronze and iron are metals that are not only easy to find. They're very abundant, but they're also very hard. So when you when it comes to building things with these metals. And so we went through an entire metal age. Let me just grab some water real quick. Went through entire metal age. And basically, whoever had the best craftsmanship could win. This was the time of the Smith when the blacksmiths basically ruled like the feudal lords because they could be, they knew the secrets. And this is why there was always secrets with metallurgy. And that's where ultimately alchemy birthed out of that. Right. And or excuse me, hermetics birthed out of that. And, you know, so the working of the metal, this was like a secret. It's like, oh, well, how do you get this metal to fuse with the other metal? Mm -hmm. Do not tell him, you know, this is like the Celts and the Nords and the ones who practice the most. Those are the Smiths. OK, so then we moved on, <laughs> you know, so each person, though, remind, mind you, every time each person is thinking this is it, this is going to be the end. Once I get a lot of this, then I'm going to, you know, be forever. Like, obviously, <laughs> on a physical reality, forever is limited and generally you can't take it with you <laughs> like your experiences and what you're gaining on those levels are what's going to be riding with you. All this dense matter is going to remain here. It can't fit through the womb. So what happens is, is that this next age that comes across is our our industrial age. OK, 
and this is like the birth of machines, okay? And this is the age actually you find most people missing, meaning that the state of consciousness when machines start moving in is already obliterated. And this is because the, war, the world has just come off of a war. This is why there's a, there was lots of slavery going on. It's not just with black people. It's not just with Polish people. That during this in, the, the wake of the industrial age, it literally enslaved the world to build the machine. So that's why, you know, when I'm thinking, they, when they say rage against the machine, this is what they're talking about. But see, machines are not computers in a tense. Like that's different terminology, electronics, wires, those kind of things. Machines like the old cars, they can run without, you know, they can run right through water, come right out and keep going because it's all mechanical. You see what I mean? So when the machines came, basically man prostrated. Like remember, each of these are gods. So man prostrated to the machine and the machine used man to create a world filled with machines. And obviously the vibration and the harmonics of the machine has, is what has done the most damage to the world. Because even the wars, you know, in a game where you blink for a little bit and then you hit start here again and you come back, you know, and something like that, death doesn't actually have that much weight. What has the most weight is what's going on with the collective, why it's actually in these existences. So when you have these tones and vibrations like what the machines do, jackhammers, saws, all this kind of stuff, Obviously, nature has is taken its toll and degraded that field a bit more, right? So the age of the machine is being birthed. Man then is able to fly and cars and all this kind of stuff that's basically plagiarizations from spirituality, but new to this man who's gone through these elements that are shaping and molding him. Because remember, none of this stuff from gold, even the plastic, is not real. You know, like it is it, it meaning is is real? Because you know how some people say, well. Well, plastic is fake. Anything you pull from this earth <laughs> is real. So plastic didn't come from space somewhere on a whole nother. It's from here. It's what we did with petroleum. So it has some level of sentience to it, which brings us to the next point. So obviously man has now built these machines and he is now using these machines as an extension of himself. And that's why the buildings and all that stuff, you know, all this stuff starts again. Okay. History does really repeat itself, but let's just see how everyone that's just stuck in it and not able to get outside the box truly to see it as a mechanation, they feel like each time one of these roll around because there's still different ages, you could have been here before but not recognize it because the GUI or the skin that's covering it all looks a bit different. The age is different. Now we're building things out of plastics. Now we have machines to cut things down and all these different stuff. So it takes on a different appearance. It takes on a different geometry, but it's the same thing. And this, when you realize this, then you can become a master. Every time the age comes in, you can completely master the system to get basically out of the entire thing. Like, realistically, if anyone wants to keep playing Zodiac all day, then let them sit here and do it. But there's something much more expanded. And you could tell that just by the things that are here. Clear proofs. <laughs> Not like some, you don't got to believe in anything. Go look at a plant and start taking it apart and just think for yourself one moment. Now, they... They talk about this iPhone 10 is supposed to be the biggest thing coming. But man, how do you fit a pistol in with how do you keep pollen on top of a pistol and bring it completely through the process of metamorphosis with, I mean, with wind blowing? I mean, come on. It's like it's not even in the league. So the greatest thing that's ever built here, we're actually still standing in one of them at least. So let's keep going through this. So now this plastic age comes. OK. <laughs> the damn plastic age is still here. Like if the whole ocean may be filled with plastic soon. It's like every time I get a package for something, there's so many pieces of plastic that I can't do anything with. And it's like, OK, what's happening here when the customer is so much more interested in the packing than they are what's actually inside the box? It must be wrapped in plastic, then some more cardboard. So basically we get this age of even the currency, because remember, all through these ages, the current, the actual the metal or the time or whatever, it became the current. So in this plastic age, that's when they start passing out their credit cards. <laughs> it was like, yo, we got these credit cards and you could literally have. I remember when Air American, American Express Black came out. You would have thought Jesus came back or something the way everyone knew about it. It was like, yo, this card right here, you know, you could you could spend one hundred thousand. You got cats coming to the club and they like literally wearing it on their shirt. Like, yeah, look, you know, I could go get a hundred right. I could go get a Bentley knowing damn well that still they're going to call. Hey, 
<laughs> we this is that ab- abnormal spending. We gave you the black, but you know that was just because you filled out for. It. So anyway, you get the plastic age going right, and that's moved us completely into the computer age, and. Thus, the computers, oh my goodness, like I talked about the language of light, of how basically there's a higher code, if you may, that if you actually utilize that system, you can manipulate anything on the reality because it will be only obeying its natural essence. <laughs> like it would just think that that was the thing to do because it would feel that way. That's why sometimes you can't even trust your feelings if you're lost. So it's like, oh, I feel like I'm connected to this. And uh, I, I, so let me explain it to you carbon and silicon. Silicon on the periodic table, carbon, these two elements, when you put them together, they attempt to actually, well, silicon mainly, attempts to try to communicate with the carbon-based molecule. Remember, we're carbon-based molecules. Computers are silicon. But see, the silicon is sentient too. <laughs> and it's silica, your quartz crystal. You know, people are like, wait a minute, what do you think? We're close to machines? Okay, I'm done. He's already got those weird tattoos. I'm done. No, silica is your quartz crystals, all them crystals you do, oh, namaste. Those, that feeling and connection is actually coming from different variations of organic silica and also other chemicals and compounds mixed together creating colors. Things formed over a prolonged period of time. Or just like they started creating diamonds. Diamonds take thousands of years to be formed, but now they can make one in Canada in 10 minutes. Take it through the same process. Then you just get people arguing about which one is really real but the real facts that's being brought up is that you can actually take these elements and you can create them in a synthesized process and produce them much more rapidly, okay? So what this means is, is that we took the silica and we started creating, well, it looks like it was being done from the Temple of Edfu times, but that the true uh, use of the black goo was to create the first huge motherboards or processors to record and maintain basically a crystal grid of memories of all the interactions that, are, that have gone on here on this planet, but not just from humans, everything that came into the grid. And this is what all these ancient sites and pyramids and all that were really connected to do and are still doing that on their octave, right? So what's happening here is that that whole grid of connection through with using silica, silicates, crystals, the knowledge of the power when crystal was the god, okay? That is a level of knowledge that brought about, again, the knowledge of understanding how to build computer chips because that's ultimately what it's made out of. And then ultimately, this all boils down to sand on an ocean. Meaning like, sand is what we're talking about. You superheat sand, it becomes glass. You keep superheating it, you keep removing the impurities, it becomes pure quartz. It is highly conductive, and if you start shaping it and fashioning it like a Jew can do a trillion cut, then it has more facets, so it has actually more of a dish to communicate. But I don't know about that, though, because that was the crystal age. So anyway, moving through this, we find that finally some people are saying, so what's going to be after the computer age is going to be the age of ether. You heard it here now. Like there's going to be a final discovery and when it finally happens after the, you know, they say the, the, the tipping point <laughs> when people start realizing, yeah, there's a whole nother field that you have around your body. And that one also has even access to other spaces. It's kind of even what you're using when you're seeing dreams and it can even do more and we can even charge it. We can even nourish it. We can even take care of it. So that awareness, because they're simple machines like ga- gastric discharge device can show you the energy field vividly with your own eyes around your body. So let's say, for instance, everyone sees the gastric dis- discharge device pictures and says, wow, there's another field around my body. Then the age of ether starts to come in because people start realizing there is an ethereal component to their body. But of course, many of us have known that for a long time. So we're talking about when the masses come to the awareness of that, that ends the world of computers as we know it. And then when AI finally rears its face and then singularity happens, the etheric consciousness will always remain there. It it will keep expanding. So this is also about how you're positioning yourself now. You got to get on this path now. So that way you're not sitting always getting hit with these ages, errors, they call them. (laughs) Don't get, you know, you're just getting slammed with these waves. And it's like, if you ever been out there where the waves are really hitting, it's like before you even recover, you're like, what happened? Oh my goodness, I'm going to die. We're going to whoosh. And it's, it's pretty intense. And this is likened unto what most people are experiencing when they don't know the signs of the times. So 
finally, we get to a point where now you need to understand the banking part of this, right? You're getting the metaphysical aspects, but now let's talk about the banking. So what we have is, is we have really policies going on in the world. It's important for me to give you an eye into the old world. There actually wasn't a thing called interest. Now, there were other systems. I'm not going to tell you this was the greatest place and they were all sweet and kind and we all lived on the island. We fed each other grapes. That ain't the story of humanity in this last 10,000 years. What was going on is, is you had a lot of centralized power systems and inside that system, there were few vacuums, meaning few different people doing their own different kind of thing. It's a lot less people, lot, you know, the earth has time, meaning time to grow and experience and realize its individuality before the crazy stuff starts. So during this time, you had simple principles that pretty much resided over kingdoms. So you did have a king and, you know, uh, gods and a few other things set up. But these simple principles were things like, because it was all centralized, there's no interest. There's no such thing as interest because what interest means, interest means on money, okay? Like having to borrow something and pay more back than you borrowed. See, the reason why those kind of things were stomped out really early is because it actually creates what we know as debt. So the original systems, which are functioned very similar to barter, is that everything was, you had to find what the equal was up to it, uh, the equal was of it. And the, in, the reason why I mentioned that is remember, it, like in, in the ancient Arab tradition, the ancient Islam, there's no such thing as interest. And in fact, if you charge your brother interest, it's basically like you, you were acting like the devil. <laughs> like if you asked for more back than you were actually given, it was known to throw you off balance. Because think about it, that, that's really a, a, the real principle we want to work with here. If you work for something, you get it, you should be able to have it. So that way everyone is not looking at you like, you know, you know why ain't you have anything yet? You've been doing all this work. Or you haven't done anything. How do you have that much? And this is what goes on in the world, right? So they wanted to keep everything balanced from that perspective. I'm not saying everything else was balanced, but for that perspective, it was really balanced with, hey, no interest. Because also, if you charge someone interest, it was also like it was, it was taken as you were trying to muscle in on the king. Because the king was the one charging the most interest, thus levying taxes. So if you had your own like side taxes, just like right now, it's like you start up your own tax organization. They're going to be like, eh, what are you doing? So just think about it. You got to put yourself as a fly on the wall and reverse engineer the entire thing. And you'll come to this point of realizing there was no interest. So what happened was we get a time of what we know as the feudal lords. OK, and you got to This is the part of school that you were actually sleep on. <laughs> Most of us, at least me, I probably won't even spell it right. So feudal lords. OK, this is a time when basically now the kingdoms are split into little fiefdoms, as they call it, from what I can remember. And these little fiefdoms are ruled by these individual, generally smiths. And they're levying taxes, but they basically have a price to pay to the king. The king's like, look, y'all in charge of the whole thing now. I'm not going to be managing all this like Moses, no, more, no longer managing all the people, but hiring the judges to do it. See, the instructions are already there. So what happens is, is that he takes the feudal lords and he says, you know, y'all go and manage the micromanage the thing. And then y'all owe me this amount. Well, whatever you get over that is on you, but you owe me this about. So these little feudal lords actually became so powerful that they actually end up even becoming to the point where they can influence entire countries. Now, some of the, the, feudal, the feudal lords that you'll recognize the most under their name is actually the Knights Templar. OK, because in that area that they were in, if you ever want to see how if white people have been enslaved before, because they definitely have in these kingdoms, these feudal lords would tax and levy on the people so heavy it was like baby you would even get a from can i get a pence can i just get the little crumb and it was just like no you know he's like my daughter's dying this kind of thing was really happening over there and they were ruling by the sword since this is the iron age you know it's like heavy armor and you know big conan looking cats right so, so this is what's happening it's not a myth so what happens is is that the knights templar are basically then known as feudal lords became so wealthy 
they started being able to influence kings and kings were even borrowing money and resources from them because the king, you know, it was always by birthright. And some of these people were less uh, not able to rule at all. They were better able, couldn't even tie their own shoes, you know, all spoiled, all sorts of stuff. And, you know, you had so these feudal lords, they were like real in the field. So they had way more intelligence and knowledge. So it wasn't a, but a short period of time before the king start trying to borrow from them, even for protection. And all sorts of stuff. So this is when you start seeing the big shift of things being in the hands of emperors and all this kind of thing versus these mercenaries and, and feudal lords, etc. But this story is very central for you to understand because it involves the Knights Templar, which are the feudal lords, because they had consumed that area entirely. Let me put it up here again so those coming on will know what I'm talking about because I'm going to have to stay on this topic for just a moment so you can realize how this starts getting spiritual again. Because this is what, these are the people who constructed the pact with the devil, the actual contract of debt, the actual contracts with what there seems to be one creature running around the dimension is interested in doing, which is enslaving other, cre other humans. Okay? Now, there's people, pimps, that don't mind enslaving other humans. So for you to think that it's so far off that there's another being that may not be actually have a physical body as you know it, that may be interested in that same thing, it's not far off. And most people have called that being the devil or Satan, okay? So that's the only term you have. Even if those words specifically, mainly Satan, don't even mean exactly what we've come to believe it as. The devil, more closer to because of its division, its divide, its evil, its turning it opposite, it's awareness in the reality, it's Baphometic type of reality, all of that, what would we would call life, which is a lie in many cases, is constructed. So they speak with a forked tongue. They tell you things that it is the truth, but it's kind of like not as you understood it to be like that. Weird stuff, okay? So anyway, staying focused, you have Knights Templar, right? So they got all the money, and they're sitting back. They've basically vacuumed the entire land. Everyone that is transacting and doing anything are all paying them. So they said, you know what? We need to get to another territory. We need to get over there where today is Iraq, Iran, what we would call Arabia, what we would call Persia, all those there. We need to get over there because that heard, and then the stories just are endless. <laughs> you know, uh, from the Thousand and One Arabian Nights all the way to, you know, everything you can think of in the imagination of the people on the other side of the world of what they could get from the other side of the world. But the thing was, it wasn't like you were just going into somebody's shit that you were going to take. Meaning that between Ben Saba, Hashashin, Genies, Sharifs, Aladdins, <laughs> And all the rest of that that people think is, is false, but still even exists today, jinn, all of that, there was a stronghold that could not even be breached by what we know as the European Caucasus, those areas. It, it, it's, it wasn't impossible for them to even get into the structure. They would lose horribly. And this actually is, you know, you're catching somewhat of the end of it when they start reporting the Crusades and the massive losses that they, the Catholics and all of them would incur with trying to deal with these Arabs who basically they were on their territory. They're used to dealing with sand, desert, all these different things that would consume their armies. So the Jesuits, because this is who's on the other side, that's a whole other conversation about what they were doing before the Knights Templar popped up. Interesting story though, but the Jesuits are like, Man, we're losing these wars. And if we can't get the Holy Land, then we can't authenticate the Christ myth. <laughs> we need the Holy Land. And then also people believe in the Christ myth and they're trying to get to the Holy Land. They're getting robbed and they're getting beaten and they're piling Christians up by the, ro by the roadside as a warning for all Christians not to try to enter into this Holy Land. How can we keep the Christ myth going with this? So... One of the leaders of the Knights nice Templar, somehow this gets in. You know, it's still a small world. Get some water here. It's still a small world, so it's not like they got to jump on the cell phone to figure out the Jesuits are having a problem dealing with the Arabs. <laughs> so this is what happened. The Knights nice Templar struck a deal. They told the Jesuits, look. We can give you the security. We can secure your people going into the Holy Land. We can help you take the Holy Land. Jesuit was like, I'm listening. 
basically, what, what do you need? This is what we need. First of all, we want to be able to lend people money. And right then, the judges said, mm, no. Because, see, a lot of these people are coming from old states, states of consciousness that everyone practices as a principle. It doesn't mean that they're good or bad. They have this way. It's like trying to tell someone about computers that didn't even grow up in that age. They're like, I don't uh, the beeping and the phone and all the button. I don't want to deal with that. And then also, you know, it just keeps going like you, people are out of their league. Right. So the Jesuits, when they were asked to for that first request, they refused it. No. Then they got their ass kicked a little bit more and then they came back and they said, OK, what what is it that you really want to do with this interest? And then the nice temple were already ready for them because they are actually moving with another hyperdimensional being that we'll get with later, but they were already ready for, what, for the Jesuit slip right then of allowing them to charge interest. So they, pre they presented this. We will allow, if you allow us to charge interest, we will do a few things. One, we will create forts from here to the Holy Land, from the major places that people are coming from, we'll create forts along the path and those forts will serve for two things. One, it'll serve to keep everything protected in, in, great, in good distance from each other. Two, they will serve as fortresses to house people that are going to the Holy Land. And most importantly, it will become a bank. Now, the whole concept of banking was born right then, this level of banking. And what this level of banking is about is that, remember, there's no credit cards, there's nothing. So if you're leaving, let's say, I don't know, we just come up with a place in your mind and you're going to the Holy Land, Damascus, whatever. Everything that you need to make that entire trip, you need to bring with you. So, of course, you're going you're gonna to come through with a caravan. Actually, the more money you have, the more they be like, yo, he coming, he coming. You know, he's still coming. It's like, wow, look at all this. Because he's bringing food, he's bringing everything, you know. And then also, when you're going to the Holy Land, there was, you know, the zakats and all these different things you needed to pay, the charity, the priest, the, well, I'm kiss my daughter, name her. All that was going to cost. So they needed to bring all of that with them. And this is what left them as just like, again, for the, for the, uh, for the mercenaries in the desert, this was like fatted calf. They were like, here they come. Get on! And it was over. So... The Knights Templar were going to solve that problem for the Jesuits. So you can see how they were like, yo, let's let them do what they do, because then this other system could start where from that first fortress. <laughs> don't worry, this is Disney, <laughs> Disney, Disney animation right here <laughs> from that from that fortress, that first fortress that you hit you know, which wasn't too far from probably where you were staying at, you can put all your goods and your money and everything, all your money and everything right there. And then they would assess what the value of was it, uh, the value of it is. And then they would give you a little piece of paper. And with that, and a little signet and everything on it, with that, when you got to the next fort, you could show, take that paper to them and they would give you an advance you. So this means you weren't rolling with everything. This meant that you had protection as you go. So that's how the first bank started. Now, this seems kind of like a, just a process that's almost natural to people who don't realize what's going on in the background. And what actually was going on in the background is actually at some point those feudal lords under Smith, which is Cain, had come in contact with some knowledge, some deeper esoteric knowledge that actually is related to why John the Baptist's head got cut off, which is always a metaphor of a talking head. And that John actually comes back in the Greek as Oannes, which actually comes back further and further till you get to basically a fish god who supposedly came out from the ocean and taught men during the day. This, could, this is basically the Saturnalian myth, mythos. And so through this process, this God, which was not around during the times of the Knights Templar, somehow they say the Knights Templar fell into possession of the head of the God, that somehow the head of this God was still circulating long after it had left its physical body. And this head was known to prophesy, it became an oracle, but really more on a malevolent level, that if you want to know how to destroy your opponent and you really willing to do some sacrifices, 
then the head would basically grant these abilities. All right, all right, all right. We're going to let it breathe a little bit. Let it breathe and, you know, let everyone rejoin the chat. Yeah, you know how it is. It's free streaming. You know, most companies charge for the stream and Facebook trying to get it going on for free. But I'm sure they got, like, you know, a high load on their servers. Yeah. You know. <laughs> mm. Now everybody using it. They Facebook and they drive to work live. I'm like, okay, what you got for me? Like, I'm in traffic. It's like, do you really need to report this? <laughs> All right, so uh, you're using it the bandwidth. So I'm going to give a moment, and uh, if, when you can hear me, let me know. Yeah. This is going to get into cryptocurrency, but you, just, you need this. Because sometimes when people explain to you, you, know, you don't even get, you don't, know, you don't have this knowledge, so it kind of seems like, okay, well, you know, I got a little bit of time then. I'm not worried, but no. Right now, the door is open. I suggest making a, making a segue into, into sovereignty ASAP. Drop what you're doing. You know, don't quit your job. But I'm going to give some instructions today on how you can really do well for yourself. Every aspect of how you can do well for yourself with cryptocurrency on a financial level. So again, so we're at this point where the Knights Templar are propositioning the Jesuits to charge interest because the Knights Templar are aware of a few things. One, if they can start charging interest, they'll eventually own the entire world. The more that they can spread these banks, the more that they can get in possession of different areas, then it will be pretty much nobody will be able to buy or sell without getting involved with them in some way or another. But they're not that smart, <laughs> meaning that that knowledge didn't come from them. That knowledge came from that head because apparently the Jesuits figure out, and this is what creates our whole situation with Friday the 13th, for those who don't know, the Jesuits start getting reports. Actually, they say that this is what happened, that the Jesuits already knew, but they were willing to deal with whatever the Knights Templar were being accused of doing, as long as they could make good on this whole process that they said they were going to get going for them about securing the Holy Land. So the Knights Templar went right into business, and actually they were able to secure strong routes and begin winning the Crusades. So at a certain point, the Jesuits was like, they're kind of tainting our reputation now, like all the rumors. You basically know that they're worshiping the devil. And then they're like, yeah, but, you know, I guess we don't really need them anymore. So how are we going to go at getting rid of them? And one of the Jesuits was like, well, why don't we basically say bring these claims to them, make it public. And since we already got basically witch trials burning and all that, we'll accuse them of doing what they're doing and then let the public drag them away. So this was the idea. I think it was Jacques de Moulet and a few others. They rounded up the leaders of the Knights Templar. And on a Friday the 13th, they set them out to be burned, I guess, at the stake. And supposedly Jacques Moulet uttered a curse against the Jesuits that they were cursed forever and that <laughs> they would basically die horrible deaths and all sorts of stuff. And he uttered that curse to them on the Friday the 13th. Now, there's many stories that go on around whatever happened with those nights. Even the story that the Jesuits even bought them in when you really understand the Jesuits seems a little bit fabricated, brought them in and actually put them at the stake. It could have been and probably was a mock scenario. Like, so the public sees it as one thing. Oh, the Jesuits don't want the Knights Templar. Knights Templar stop existing as Knights Templar. They want that anyway because they need to move out of the spotlight and run these banks in the background. The devil has based or this entity, Baphomet, or actually Asmodeus and a few other <laughs> hyperdimensional scumbags get all together and concoct a ritual around money. So basically how it works is, so a person's signature is their two-dimensional imprint. And I haven't spent much time writing because it's just slow. Like, look how slow writing is. I wish I could just draw a bird or something and you just know what I'm talking about. So the signature is the 2D of the of the dead person, basically the 2D of the straw man body. OK, so it's basically a two dimensional imprint. The signature is. So when we have these these signatures, when we sign on papyrus, which is basically the paper. Notice the Jesuits are also known as the papacy. They make paper. Their master is papas. OK, so they carve wood. They work with paper. They work with the power of wood which is vast, wands and all those kind of things, old trees, willow trees, 
like there's a lot of power in trees. Ayahuasca is a tree. OK, I just thought it was a vine, but it's a vine. OK, I would just connect it for you. There's some trees in there, but there's a lot of knowledge. That's another age. There was an age of paper where even poetry, that's the age of romance, where they're basically casting spells on you, selling you this dream about this fictitious prince and Montagues and Capulets. This is their craft. OK, that's why when they wrote that Bible, folks still don't know what it really is saying. And they just in love with it. You see, so there they work with paper. OK, so this paper they were putting together, basically, if they could get the two dimensional imprint of the person on the paper with an obligation to the God that they trust, it meant that the person has sold their soul to the devil. And thus they will hold those souls. One place is the exchequer. They will hold these souls. And that's where this whole like thing came with, you know, the straw man and no names and all those different movements, which have been very powerful movements and taught people a lot about, hey, this whole name thing, if it can be named, it can be controlled. So remember, on the top of all this trust law, they don't own anything. They manage it. So that way, when something happens, they're not on paper as the one that to go to even energetically, spiritually McDonald's is not getting a phone call himself. Mr. McDonald, you made my son sick. He ate this thing. No, you're calling like customer service and OK, we'll report that for you, ma'am. You're never going to get in touch with what's on top. So they've separated themselves from the reality and allowed this system of banking and the buying of souls and the debt and the accumulation of debt and weight, which means you just get held up. It's like you don't get enough money. You try to borrow money. You get in debt. You just get held up. Every single thing is like it's a holder, it's a stick up like they rob you for your energy, your current. They form contracts. They carve paper. People have seen enough of what's in the dollar bill. I did a whole uh, video on all the bills mostly in the world to show, hey, this is not just the dollar bill. Look, this galoosh, which is the name of all of that weaving that goes on. You don't even know what it's called. That galoosh and how that affects things on a vibrational level, that's the waves and the frequency right there. So it's just like there's another level of knowledge. Back around when they were playing around with wands and not PlayStations, there was a whole nother way of communication with nature and all that was here, and man and woman found their entertainment within something else, predominantly creating these interesting beings that you see walking around here all the time if you're taking a moment to look. So anyway, the debt system is created. The Knights Templar begin their banking throughout the world. Just like their cross, which is actually a symbol of the cube itself and mastery of the cube. The symbol of mastery over the cube. Let me draw it right. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. There's a few of them. They all have different variations. Sometimes there's a curve. They like to work with the angles versus the curve. So this is their star. This star is a mapping of the vertices of a cube, which is the world that people have been confined to in their square minds. OK, so and then it's basically comes out as a cross to a lot of people. This is the mastery of the four elements and the knowledge of the time in which there was nothing beside the four elements. So just to understand this. Let me get my board here. Take just a quick moment. So basically that cube that I'm showing you is their symbol. The only place that you gen well, you see different places, but the place that bears this symbol is what we recognize the most is Switzerland. Switzerland is the only country that never goes to war because they orchestrate the wars. Those who are behind the banks, the bank is in Swiss. You know that, right? But people don't know how deep it goes. That same cross is the same cross of the Knights Templar which became known as the nice hospitlers. Then it's your hospital, probably your Red Cross now. You see what I mean? So they interweave themselves into every organization on some level or another because all have to report back to the bank. That's the, that's the real thing. Like whether you don't like it or not, don't you still collect your checks? Some people, now nah, I'm growing my stuff. You collect a check somewhere. You're collecting some greenback somewhere and it's almost unavoidable pretty much till now. That's why I'm actually talking about this right now, not because I just want to jump on to a whole nother subject about something. It only about that. The key to this, when you understand the metaphysics, crypto basically means death. OK, crypt means death. 
okay? It also means encoded because nobody knows what's going to happen when you die, <laughs> right? So cryptography means that the ability to vacuum death, dead presidents, old talismans, things people don't even understand, vacuum their asses all up into this big vacuum of this cryptocurrency coming in. Then when it comes, goes in, no one knows where it came from, meaning that that dollar, $100 is gone. It will never be back into the world again as we know it. Now, this is something that's happening, but I'm skipping ahead a little bit. But just remember, there's a connection with this, because when you understand what's going to happen when you die, now you've transcended death. Now you can truly live as we know it, meaning that we can when we don't have that thing still hanging over our head that we often ignore the Green Reaper. Right. He's just walking around with it. It's like <laughs> I know I'm eventually going to die and we don't know what's going to happen then. It should be a concern. Now, anybody who's not concerned about it has gone several layers into uh, programming to just get it out of their consciousness. They in there having fun. Even like, yeah, I ain't even gonna lie. I was one of them. I was, yeah, baby. And then you're just like, the time is ticking. You know, it's ticking. But for even for me, it would like get red sometimes. And sometimes I'd be like, you know, still with the Christian programming running like, man, this is the devil. <laughs> like this ain't it, but it's fun. So all those phases we go through, that's got to, we have to uh, uh, come back in and be, like I said, now being present, being here, because you got to make up for that time loss. But the interesting thing is you're a time machine, right? So we recollect the past as our memories. We are there still. We can remember we stand in the present and we be here right now, even in the moment. But we can have a vision of the future. And because we can do that, that's all I need. Like You don't got to give me nothing else. Like I got full range like that. I'm going to just stick to that and see how much I can do with that. I'm sure it'd be way beyond what can go on here. So remember, you're precious. You've got some real jewels. It's just you've been robbed, though. <laughs> Seriously, it's been a time where someone has devaluated what you're truly worth and put value into something else. And then that something else has become like an egregor animate on the dimension. Now bossing everyone around. They got an invisible God right now. This is hilarious. They got an invisible God that tells them what to do that looks like Santa Claus. This is ridiculous. If I start tapping into something like that, man, no telling where you'll find me at. But there's other people there now. So this is why there's this ain't playing games like your elders were not playing games with you when they were trying to teach you about your uniqueness. And I say try because it was still up to you. But when they were getting to, for the process of teaching you about your uniqueness, it was all very serious. Why? Because they took you through these, the four elements, right? Now you need to know the real gods, <laughs> not the ones that are asking you to do anything. Those are the lackeys like, oh, you need to worship me. Man, gods don't talk English. This is fire, earth, wind, water. If you go long enough without heat, what's going to happen? If you go long enough without water, what's going to happen? Go long enough about air. What's going to happen? And then in that order, meaning there's even a rank to them of which one you can deal with the most because of how deal without the most because of how your being is juxtaposition. Yet man stretched. And women stretch across this cross. Literally, that's what it means. You're stretched out across the cross, right? They call that on the spokes <laughs> of the wheel of time, right? Playing around in here like these folks didn't just decimate your ancestors. And I don't care who you are, whether you're Polish, whether you're African, you're black, whether you're white, whoever you are, it's been slavery. And it's been going on on a higher level until right now. And then you still got people running around here just tapped into something else. But time out for that. So here we go. We're going to keep going. So you see how it's all structured. You see that basically they're playing talismans <coughs> on old to what a piece of paper can do. OK, like it's just something that you don't know about, but you can concentrate power within parchment. So if you fast for two weeks and then on the last day, as long as the the uh, the parallax is angled properly, meaning just like the sun dam comes out and heats things, just like the moon starts growing things during a certain time. So, too, there's a time and place for everything. Yet man is not observant of the stars. He's wandered after the false stars and the false gods. Right. So the true one, the astronomy, the disc. You know, what time play for everything. You ain't rushing because you already know there's going to be an ideal time for you to get into it. So what happens is, is that there's this process because man is a talisman himself. Woman is a talisman themselves. One of the layers of the body is a pentagram. That's the body. It's phi, right? That's six or sex, right? That's a part of the, the being that we're layered with. So, okay. So what happens is, is that in this process, <laughs> take a moment here. 
in this process, man becomes and woman be, is the talisman so they can perform the magic. And they perform the magic, let's say, for instance, just to close down the whole idea of talismans. So since you're magic as they know it, you could come after a two week fast. Now you're super hungry, but you whack strong like the body's almost dead, <laughs> like it's lost the battle. And now you're almost completely spirit. That's the purpose of fasting. But body's barely hanging on, trying to eat the things the spirit eats, but it doesn't like it. The body likes matter, prana. It likes to eat vegetables. It could even get to cr crazy enough to start eating meat like that's the body. But the higher level of consciousness, it's a higher level of sense. So it eats something different. It must feed on a higher essence. So when you go on the fast, the body starts to basically die because it's not getting fed. But the higher side is actually coming more alive. This is actually I ran into this situation personally where I almost killed myself. I actually got to a point where I really felt like my joints was detaching. And it was only a last hope to go and see this guy that this girl was recommending that probably would know maybe what was going on because he did Tai Chi. So I went to him and he said, hey, let me test your Ming energy real quick. And I was like, OK, and I'm thinking in my mind, I'm completely anti at this point. I'm like, man, another sham. And then so he was like, he did one of these movies He's like, man, your Ming's way out here. And I was like, OK, what does that mean? He said, basically, you're going to die soon. And I was like, what? I was like, now I'm like, damn, I shouldn't have came and see this dude anyway. And then he's like, yeah, because you don't want to be here anymore. You keep sending this signal to your consciousness that you don't want to be here. and You need to stop doing that. Right. Because remember, we went through this time where it was so tough to be here on this planet. We didn't want to be here no more. And that's the truth. But then what happened was we started realizing that, hey, man, that's just all about the process. You can cry all you want. And it will bring tears to others' eyes, but still, once you're done with the dreams and once you're done with these kind of actions, you'll still have to come back to this. Even my teachers just say, why do you do that? You're still going to have to come back to this? So what I'm saying is, is that it got to a point where, first, I didn't want to come back to it anymore. And when I start getting more and more powerful and more and more strong in my consciousness of realizing the difference between the spirit versus the flesh, I started to basically kill the flesh. And then at that point, I got to a point where I couldn't even move around. Every time someone sneezed, I was catching a cold. And this master clearly was like, yo, that part of your mind you need to change. You got an orbit. Everyone's going to leave here at some point. You don't got to rush the process. Be here now. Stay with these people. Do your mission. And bam, I recovered. So it's just an old that, again, your body eats different levels of energy. This is what we're talking about. So what happened was is that when you go on that two-week fast, let's say now you're all whack strong with that power, right? But what happens when you start eating again? Well, what happens is, is that obviously the vibration starts to come down. Why? Because it's just, this is so simple. This is not even like, like spookism or whatever they call it. This is in the frequencies, vibrations, tones, wavelengths, all the stuff we study here. When you have less density inside of your organs, they have nothing in there for them to process. They just vibrate. And as that song say, vibrate higher, you start vibrating higher and higher and higher. And then this process, it puts you into a different zone. So then sometimes what happens is when you obviously start eating, you fill the organs back up again and now the vibration goes down. So how can you save? How can you hit the save button? Sometimes I'm into these real time role playing strategy games because it's like even crazier than chess. It's like chess with 100 pieces on the board. But then sometimes I just know that I need to save it because the computer could bust a move on me. So I got a save button. So how can you save? All that essence that was right there in that time. Talisman. Now, not only is it saved in your consciousness, I would advise to understand that everything that's outside we have within. You are the living talisman. There's a ring or a layer that you've gone through during that experience. But there's another way where you can actually conscribe something. Now, this could be your form of art. That's why talismans are not just a little piece of paper with squiggly weird lines on them. Talismans also are works of art, paintings. Like the Mona Lisa is a talisman. So what it is, is that a person that has any form of their unique expression, if they take it during that time and they create something, it stores, saves it. And then that's the power of consecration. OK, so the dollar is consecrated. Now, this the reason why our dollar especially is a rectangle, right? Because it's on it's on phi. OK. And so and it's got a, a face here, which is a dead president. OK, so that's necromancy. <laughs> it's like you see what I'm talking about here. You have a talisman constructed with a dead person on it with their two dimensional signature. <laughs> 
you have a magnetic strip running across it so that way it has a power supply. The reason why it becomes a power supply for it, for those who have that question and understand electronics, is because it's actually a tree. It's still made out of paper. Paper doesn't charge with electric, but it charges with magnetic. And so thus, power has been given to the God that they trust, this dead necroman necromancy holder, which is basically all the dead precedents are actually basically tubes to the egregor that was created during when they decided to bring from heaven to below and work the craft on the entire world. And basically that's what you're dealing with within secret society is that they consecrate all their energy into an egregor. So that way the egregor can move on their behalf and that they can have more than the constraints of their consciousness, which would be quite a bit of things. Meaning that instead of working as one person, one being expanded, they work as several beings with a partial level of expansion, i.e. a degree to create a complete being. And that's how the power is divided. That's called compartmentalization. OK, so that same structure of division is actually everywhere because they are actually worshiping. The God of division, who they call Deuce, which is Deuce Pater, Zeus, Jesus, the division, confusion, judgment. You judge, you shall be judged. And again, this is the part of the judgment. So one second, let me make sure we're still good. Yeah, you just didn't get it canceled here. OK, so we're almost we're done. So this is it, meaning that now we're going to dive into the cryptocurrency because now you get why it's such a big thing to actually get out of being a debt slave and dealing with money and talismans because they do their own rituals in the expanse of what they're involved in. It's almost like, you know, they have this saying of how you can be hanging with the wrong people and then end up getting shot up and it had nothing to do with you. <laughs> That's just what we're talking about here. The depth of what they've gotten themselves involved in is more than you can even fathom. They've opened the chasm on them and, and thrust themselves in it. So instead of you jumping in too, it's like there's, some, there's a rope now to, hey, get out of this. I have a picture that I'm going to show later on to talk to you about I mean, really briefly about how it's actually positioned, if I can get to it. But basically, you will be going back up through a wormhole that just like the cosmos is here as they show it to you, this is a wormhole, so it goes down like a sink, right? So you got it going down, and actually at a certain point, it breaks off into a cube. The prism shatters, and it becomes what we know as the cube or the box. That's a pretty bad cube. <laughs> the box. And so all the people's memories, all the self-ID, all the fake stuff that they've accumulated, fake only because when you get in the face of realness, it just doesn't stand up. <laughs> Not that it doesn't have some validity to you now. So you got these connections called personalities, which actually spread out into zodiacs, and it just becomes basically a choose your own adventure. <laughs> and where people are loading data that they think is new from a mainframe that actually possesses all realities and all results from the languages or the codes, which we call language, and loaded within it. And the only way to actually get out of this is to become an uploader. So you actually learn how to vibrate so that you can spin like this because you can't get out of the cube unless you could assume, assume the shape. And this is what they would call like, see down here, the only time this knowledge was actually trying to leak to humanity. And even then they were already trying to manipulate things is with the Merkaba. See, because the Merkaba can control the physical field because it matches with the cube. This is the cube. So when they were trying to teach people, oh, well, you have a low triangle and you a high triangle, you imagine it, and then you can imagine anything you want in the world, and it'll manifest, right? So that's what, that's, it'll manifest only in the world, but it won't get you here, and that's <laughs> got there. And you could see it, and that's the order of the Melchizedeks, that they never made it beyond the priest of High El Yon. Like, they stayed here, right here in the opening. Now, this opening, is important because you have to understand this is the opening to a black hole. This is the entry and exit point. And where this resides still to this day is out there where the pyramids are, where the god of death, I can't even draw it, sits out there, which was Anubis. That's what, you know, at least uh, Hemet did leave everybody when he was sober enough is to give him a little explanation of that world that underworld and what guards the underworld, black Anubis sitting there 
And then this is the realm to the underworld. So this is the, this is going into the black hole. So if you can't traverse the wormhole like they're showing on a lot of these sci fi programs, you come out disentangled. We call that going crazy. This means that the person's body is still here, but they're out of their mind and it's like they're not here anymore and they're betwixt. They're stuck between two worlds. They come back sometimes and you're like, okay, he's back. And then he, they fade back out into some crazy. You see that over there? So that's betwixt the chasm. So those who know how to ride the wormhole, real galactic surfers, also known as that sailor, can actually corkscrew themselves, which is what Dan Winter was talking about. Get yourself into an implosion vehicle rather than dealing with unorganized flesh all the time or confused spirits all the time. And then actually corkscrew yourself back into the cosmos. Now you're on the higher mainframe, which functions on curves, arcs and degrees, the real ones, not vertices and, 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 and those kind of things of what's dealt in the physical world. No more communication with this kind of structure, but only communication with the cosmos. And those interactions have always been like, well, welcome home. <laughs> like, man, damn, you got a body there. You don't have to go back, though, because your orbit's still going. But. I'm, you learn how to corkscrew. So once you know that now there's like you, you just feel like it's fulfillment, right? It's the difference between success and fulfillment. Success is when you accomplish something like, hey, I made it to the gas station before the gas ran out. Success. Fulfillment is like 70 years old sitting back there like, man, there's nothing I really need to come back. for. I don't regret that I did anything. I don't need to be back in another time that that's not in your consciousness. So then you, you let yourself free. Remember, we're the only one standing in our own way. Nothing has power over us. All that that I was just explaining to you that they cooked up. They cooked that up through a, a consistent progress of dismantling people's belief in themselves through God's. Like, remember, all the Jesuses and all of the none of that stuff as its original story, its original Gregor's, its original rights was ever externalized. It was all a magnum opus of the process of how we can eat some wheat and turn it into a seed of life for a man and an egg of life for a woman. That there was an entire alchemical incubator going on inside of here. And when we discovered that, then we would know what God knows. And that's the only connection of what was going on. So nobody was trying to find this externally. They were all looking for it within. So woe to the ones who created something external for people to bow down to and to believe was actually existing. OK, and not realizing where the knowledge truly is. So here we go. Now we're rolling into part two here. Enter the new age. <laughs> What happens is, and we're fast forwarding quite a bit, some papers appear online from a Satoshi Nakamoto. Now this happens after a few, thing, a few key things happen in the world. One, debt. <laughs> the world starts going broke. Remember the whole Greece thing? Remember all these countries, they need to be bailed out by the World Bank. They need money, right? So the world, as we know it, whole country started going broke. And they were results to it. So it's, not, it's different than the one that everyone's always broke. Remember, me wealth is now, and in, 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 in actually uh, the economy and all that's measured now on deficits. So it's like basically measured on being broke. It's not measured on being successful, balancing out, any of that, okay? So ultimately what happened is, is that Many of these countries, their, their debt notes were called in by the bank. Like, okay, well, all right, now, you know, it's time for you to pay this interest. And they were like, man, you know that nobody can really pay back interest. What you talking about? It's like, well, you know, we're going to need the Palisades then. We're going to need. And they're like, oh, come on. What do you mean? Oh, it's like that now? It's like, yeah, yeah, it's like that. You're cut off. And this is, you can't, you know, honor amongst thieves. Come on. Like, no, it doesn't happen. Dragons and, and, or snakes in this case, you know. They're like the crystal birds. They, ah, you know, mine. And when one's about to die, they all jump on them. Ah, me power. So this kind of thing, right? They're completely oblivious to who they truly are anymore. They've given themselves over completely to mammon. All right. So what happens here is, is that countries start going bankrupt. It was a serious thing. People start realizing that, yo, it's not the country's problem anymore. Or they're not fixing my problem. I'm going to have to fix it. And for many of them, it was too late. It just the as in drop completely out of it. So it's still going on and it's happening in more places. You even have nice places just full of the people that they don't want it there. They don't have jobs for and they're a little racist against. So it's uh, it's upheaval. 
okay? It means that the diaspora of the world, the pot, like who moves the cauldron, right? So those souls that are moving now, coming out of the lands, the, the, the deep lands of the fertile, the fertile lands, they're moving and now they're moving into another place. So that's energy moving. It's coming down from the south up to the north. So this is like world Kundalini, right? Like people got to put this, you know, put then you can't spell it out for everyone. You got to do your own work. But this is what it shows It's like you got people moving, they're moving up. Energy is going to start moving up in the bodies. But of course, this doesn't mean like some people always say, like, well, that's going to get better then. Nah, this is not a better or worse. This just is if you can position it so it'll actually work out beneficial and harmonic for you. But it's going to happen. You can find people on a high level completely depressed, completely like, oh, man, my kid, he never turned out to be shit. Look at him, man. Oh, man, you know, they really ripped me on that last Ferrari I just bought and I just lost all this money over here. And that wife, she's a slut. I just know. So just because they got a lot of money, it doesn't mean that they actually have the higher state of consciousness. But notice how people actually believe that right now. They believe, oh, well, if I get up there, then it's going to be better for me. No, I've watched people that went so high. They don't even know how to come down anymore. They, oh, namaste. It's all going to be better. All we have to do is hold space. Meanwhile, the entire damn house been blown off. It's like, was that a hurricane? <laughs> yeah, it is. It's an alarm clock. Wake the hell up. Nothing happens unless you make it happen. We basically want it like that. That way, when we do something massive, we use our own energy. We can count on actually becoming reciprocated by the symmetric vibration that would actually be responding to us. So here we go. So you had a scenario where one, people going broke, two, you know, the CIA decided they were going to start introducing uh, double agents again. So we had like WikiLeaks <laughs> leaking every damn thing, like basically a big leak saying that, hey, um, everything you thought is not true anymore, but from a business level, <laughs> like so you guys actually understand it because it has to do with money. All that money you guys spent on that over there, it actually didn't get there. It actually went to buy missiles for this country. and. Also, uh, check out my friend Julian. He's got some other stuff to say. And then Julian's like, oh, yeah, remember all your safety and like all your records and all your public, uh, all that is actually being sold right now. And on top of that, Equifax is going to come out and say they even lost all your stuff just to kind of cover their ass. But the truth is, is that basically everything about who you are, it's already been sold to somebody else because that's all dead anyway. That's all not even real. So anyone who was listening to that, and there's actually more people than you think, it really was a, a career ender for them. Like it really was like the day that they finally realized that they had been lied to. I had that day a long time ago too. We all have it, but it's a very strong point. Let's keep monitoring that. Make sure the sound stays on. Batteries are good. Okay. So I, no, I'm wrapping this up. So what happens is, is that, so remember like the whole world is now on their level. This is not a spiritual, uh, uh, a spiritual um, a memo that goes out. It's a business memo. And it's involving thousands and thousands of documents for anybody who's actually looked into any of that stuff that basically talk about just how bad it truly is with the money, with the activities, with our privacy, with how we're to be treated, all of that. So it was exposed in black and white. OK, that's the easiest way to say it. So after that happens, nah, 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 Satoshi appears. <laughs> OK, you know, it's like watching heroes or something. Nobody knows who Satoshi actually is. Satoshi appears, so basically on the BBS sites and on the sites that traffic things like code, someone produces some, I believe, white paper. Now remember, all the finer details you're not going to get today, meaning that some of this stuff I'm not like 100, 100 on, but I'm 90. Post, starts posting some white paper of a code of basically how to create a system that has zero chance of being frauded, hacked, or any of that, has the ability for transactions to occur, money, but also a nominee, and I was practicing that word today, a nominee <laughs> still exists, meaning that even though we see the transaction, we're able to authenticate the transactions coming through so we can balance the books, balance the ledgers, everything is fine, zero fraud, but also we don't necessarily know who made that transaction, so all of their, their privacy is protected. Because imagine if I got $30 million or whatever, let's say, I actually probably take it around 300 at least now, and I want to buy an island, the last thing I really want is third party, which is not even the government, but third party knowing I bought an island for $300 million. I want to have all sorts of good. I have to step up my security at that point because I'm going to have all sorts of people coming at me from different levels trying to get to that 300 million. So I need that to not even be known. So that's just only one reason. 
But one of the biggest reasons, actually, that Satoshi Nakamoto code became used in Bitcoin was because of the anonymity part. Anonymity. And it's because there were sites like, I guess that was 4chan. I even think it became two ends after a while. There was Silk Road, which was the old site, right? Silk Road. Don't go to these sites. <laughs> you know, right away you're going to get put on the list you know, of the computer. The computer's just going to watch you after that. It's not actual physical people back there anymore. You know, they don't have manpower for that. A computer will watch you. So these sites were selling all sorts of stuff from drugs, so they shipping it during USPS. USPS said they received like 90%, or no, it was crazy. It was like 300, 400% spike in finding drugs in packages in the mail. And this could be shipped any kind of way. It could come as a screwdriver, it could come as whatever. And this, all this was coming from the Silk Road, or these websites that were selling this. And because they can't check every package, a lot of it was actually getting through. And the only thing that needed to be solved with these kind of sites was how is money going to transact? And that was the birth of Bitcoin, or actually the popularity of Bitcoin, okay? Because this Bitcoin, which was then one Bitcoin, could be used as an equivalent to a dollar. So it actually started off that one Bitcoin was one dollar. And the reason why they wanted to use that system is nobody would know who was transacting. So, you know, if somebody's kicking in doors or whatever, they wouldn't even know who those doors to kick in. So this goes nuts. So this system of anonymy, now we know one Bitcoin right now is actually about to hit $6,000. And it catches on. So let's say Bitcoin, so we got $1, or excuse me, uh, $6,000, let's say $6,000 now, which they're saying because Amazon is actually somehow in a conference considering accepting Bitcoin right now. So everyone's anticipating there's going to be a big spike, so people are buying in. So $6,000 equals one Bitcoin, right? I think it's like this, something like that, I don't know. So $6,000, one Bitcoin. So technically, what you gotta realize is going on here, right off, because see, there's a lot of things that people skip when they're trying, they're, they're trying to explain this and people are trying to learn it from them. The first thing is, is that if there's ever a country in the world where one of our dollars, or 6,000 of our dollars equals one of theirs, we're automatically peasants compared to them. That we are basically, few, uh, we're, we're, we're uh, 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 serfs, that's what they call them. We'd be serfs because our currency would be so valueless <laughs> compared to something like that. You gotta have 6,000 of them? This is like being in Mexico 20 years ago with $1, right? And do you see how that went? So the truth is, this is a world that already exists. Now, the other interesting thing for a while, and this is what many people never report on, is that remember, who was holding the most Bitcoin? Who was holding the most Bitcoin? Obviously, the people that were selling the drugs, the people who were selling the things on the Silk Road. So when they were transacting for one Bitcoin, and this is going to lead you to do this is critical thinking. When their Bitcoin was only worth a dollar, remember, people were buying drugs, so they were buy, selling a lot of drugs. Like you go on the, this, this site and you buy the best weed, and it's even $10, $20 cheaper, and you can actually get it. You got a lot of people placing those orders. So it wasn't like they were making like little bit of money. They were making a lot. And they become the biggest Bitcoin holders. And that's why people need to think about that. That remember, the people who were running the dark web and the Silk Road. No, I'm talking. <laughs> they were the ones that were holding the most Bitcoin. So when that started becoming worth, a lot of money, there were two ways. So some people want to debunk that, like say, well, so you're saying that the CIA was the ones that were running those websites? I don't know. <laughs> I didn't say that, but you know what I'm talking about, right? So even further on than that, if you don't think that they became large Bitcoin holders, then it would have definitely happened when they start kicking in the doors. Meaning that, yes, all that Silk Road, even the guy who started the site, all the accounts, all that end up getting seized by the FBI and the CIA. Now, the thing about cryptocurrency is because everything is on a cold wallet or a, or a hot wallet or some software or something, it's actually there. And when you get it, because it's anonymous, you have it now. That's why I say you ever lose your cold wallet, your piece of paper with your code on it or whatever. That was like your money right there. And there's no way to recover. It. It's like leaving $100 downtown. So... 
when they went in apprehended all these people, they also apprehended their cold wallets and hot wallets and all the rest of the wallets from cryptocurrency. So if they didn't come into possession with most of the coins, and this is important to know now because of something I'm going to explain later, they didn't come to the possession of the coins in the beginning because they were actually running a lot of those outfits. They actually did for sure come into them when they went and kicked in all the doors of the people who supposedly were running it. So you just know that they have them. And the reason why it becomes important to know that they have and is still remember that means that the underbelly of the nasty little beast is actually the one that's a part of this new oligarchy where their money is worth that much compared to the money that they have in circulation. So word to the wise, just remember, because still, again, nobody knows who Satoshi Nakamoto was. Where there's power, there will be fear. So remember, just as powerful as this could be, it actually can rear itself into another direction. And it, it has done that already. There's lots of fraud in the industry. There's things going on, but it doesn't mean that there's not something here for you to pay attention to right now about if you are working yourself properly into this whole thing, you will never work again, period. And now's the time. You still have 2%, 2% of the people in the world that are actually aware of this. So what happens that's important to explain is that Bitcoin is basically a ledger. Anytime money is moving around just like a ledger between multiple computers, they all have to sync up and say, yeah, that ledger is clear. I'm just making it simple right now. That ledger is it's authentic. That, that's real stuff. That's all it can really do. Then came another coin called Ethereum. It started as a crowdfunding campaign. And this Ethereum, so now we got $300, actually 300, three, uh, excuse me. Yeah, this is, this is wrong, isn't it? So yeah, $300, somewhere around there equals one Ethereum right now. Okay. So Ethereum comes in and says, Hey, you know, and I'm just giving it to you in a whole nother way of understanding it, but it will tap you into what's going on. But so you don't start getting confused. <laughs> I'm basically making a story out of it. Ethereum comes and says, Hey, you know, that thing you're using called blockchain, which is the ledger. We can also use this for other stuff. Some of the ideas are like, hey, why don't we use it for voting? That way we can authenticate that each vote is really real rather than like a computer that said it was 300 votes, but it was actually somebody who rigged the whole thing and got hacked. Why don't we use it for making sure that uh, nonprofit organizations actually are really getting this money to who we're sending it to because they can see all the transactions, but it's not like any real information or secure information is being exposed. Why don't we use this so it's almost to what you can do with this code called the blockchain. And I'll put that here now so it, you can understand that in your mind. Is pretty much like the instruments of creating a new functioning society in a new world. Now remember this new world's already going on. We're about four years late. You see what I mean? Like four years late, but still right on time because it's like a, you could, there's a, so many reasons why people just turn their back on this. The governments are like, please don't make it happen, don't. Uh, if we even say anything about it, it just gets worked. Don't say anything. Ah, you said it. Okay, say we on the side. Say we not on the side. So the, they're scrambling. They, it's disruptive. That's what the word means. That means that they didn't really prepare for it, can't really prepare for it. So then also you got the people. The people are like, crypto, is that computers and stuff? Ah, I'm not going to put my money in no damn computer <laughs> and they gone off and that's it for them. So there's a lot of reasons why it's still at four years and only two, two percent of the human population knows about it. But now that again, the big players are starting to say, well, shoot, if we don't start taking cryptocurrency, we can't get any of that money that's vacuuming into this world of money where it's basically literally raining money. Meaning that many of these ICOs that are coming up and we'll explain that in a minute, they're leaving off with $14 million. That means it's getting vacuumed from the world, from all different countries, and now funneled into a cryptocurrency and just sitting somewhere in a cryptocurrency uh, format. And then other people can come in and actually start sharing in that wealth in different ways. And that's what we're going to be talking about in a minute about how you actually can do well for yourself with this. So just remember, so now the reason why I explain this and now I'll, I'll finish explaining this now so that way it sticks. The reason why I was explaining to you that the alphabet boys are m m predominantly involved in Bitcoin, meaning they hold the most Bitcoins, is because all the legacy coins, legacy means first. So the coins that came first, like Ethereum, I think you have uh, uh, Dash, you have Litecoin, right? So many of these coins 
are basically uh, like the pioneer, some of the pioneers, the first ones to develop applications. And most of those applications are like just transaction and banking applications. So their coins are actually worth and solid right now. So what was happening is, is that, and that's what I'm saying, there was like a run, like uh, other people wanted to start taking cryptocurrencies because they're like, hey, there's all this money building up. I checked it this morning, I think there was like 2,020 coins out right now, something like that. So how many ICOs are, have already launched, okay? 95% is one guy gave a figure, 95% of those are scams because an ICO is the same as an IPO and it tends to that. This would be an initial public offering, like when your company goes public, this is now when your coin or your utility goes public. And, but the, the, the difference is when an IPO goes public, you wanna buy into it, you gotta go to the stock market. Basically that means you said you're gonna go to Vegas. <laughs> you're never gonna beat Vegas. So the first day, they need to be paid back for even allowing them to be an IPO. So they basically buy up all of the, they buy up all the stocks and shares like of Apple. So then when they finally launch, let's say Apple stock, the first day it goes up, right? And that's because all the people who got the private shares and all that, they're selling it, right? And the people are buying it. And then like a few days later, it just drops out. And then from there, it's just like always trying to swim back to recover and just like, they're telling you, well, you know, you may, you'll make 7% on this this year, John. And it's like, oh, great. And it's robbery. And they know it is, and it's rigged. So because of that, when you're dealing with an ICO, these are real people. And it's so easy to do in retrospect that a lot of ICOs are already started up, and they're just coming up with anything in their mind that's going to be their utility. Some people are buying into it because there's like, just like a stock, there's a process called pump and dump. That means that it could look like it's about to be something major and then they could even make it seem like that through media and through buying it themselves. Then everyone starts buying it. Then right when it gets to its highest price, they sell all theirs and then the shares drop and then everyone else is left with shares that are never going to be worth anything and then they are off with these millions of dollars. So 95%. And also remember, because this is also going into a world, unless you're using escrow, that is virtually anonymous, even if you're using escrow, that means that if someone does run off with your money, there's no police to call. Remember, it's decentralized, so there's no Knights Templar to call. Hey, bring those Sharif badges over here with the seven-pointed inverted star and that five-pointed pentagram and take care of these folks. So none of that can actually happen. So this is why, this is why you're literally becoming the bank, okay? Think of this as you are now the bank, so the, all your protection basically is on you. So you have to protect yourself from hacking and different things. Not hard to do, but you just can't be sloppy in there. Just like that's why you don't run the bank right now. <laughs> Some of us have been pretty sloppy at how we're handling our financial aspect. In fact, I'm actually having the conversation that many of our fathers should have actually had with us on that sit down about investment. But again, many of the blowout from this reality and living this way has caused a, a, a great uh, uh, um, degradation on, on, on our ancestors and our elders. Right. So this means that somebody has to get with it. Then somebody has to be like, Hey, the reason, and also remember the one of the reasons why I'm here right now and just shaking you like this, like cryptocurrency, cryptocurrency, cryptocurrency is because if during the time of the internet or four years ago when this was happening and all those different people that I even knew then, if somebody had came up to me and really just not an email like, Hey man, you should check out cryptocurrency. It's like, that's not how I tell people anything. I'm like, look, your soul, <laughs> your soul, you better watch these numbers and these papers and I'll go through because I'm, I'm really telling you something that you need to pay attention to. When they come to me, they're like, yeah, man, you may want to check out crypto. When you get to the toilet about to use the restroom, you may want to check out cryptocurrency. And it's like if I had if four years ago, they had to shook me up. I, I mean, I'd be funding all the consciousness at that point. I'd be like, yeah, let's do it. Let's try that. Oh, Hedron Collider and Plasma Motor. Ah, let's try that. Uh, community, 500,000 people all speaking differently. Ah, yeah, let's try that. Because you, you would literally have the money like that. Like you're talking about 5,000 Bitcoin, $22 million right now. And listen, I think it's somewhere around there. But the thing is, is that see out in the world, the real world, not your little city or town or whatever, not where your passport goes, but in the real wow, wow world. OK, when you come through with Bitcoin, now you can transact because they don't want to touch you if you run around with this greenback necromancy piece of death that's got numbers tracking every single thing that it, it is doing.
So what I'm saying is, is that you become instantly an international banker. See, that was my whole thing is like when I started getting a lot of money and I could no longer put it under the mattress and I was a bit concerned, I started realizing that actually I had been sold a lie that just because I had a whole room of cash like Brewster's millions, it didn't mean that everyone was going to want to take it. And if I walked onto that Bugatti lot and tried to bring them them suitcases with some big dudes and we're bring, they was going to be like, you need to go to the bank with that because we don't know where that came from. We don't want to explain to anyone why we have this. It's like, no, they don't want it. So money is not really as valuable as you think it is when it comes to big purchases. So then you start thinking, well, I need to get into international banking. Then this is the process. And so you start thinking of Panama, you start thinking of Switzerland, you start thinking of, uh, 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 uh what is that? Uh, 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 Astoria, you start thinking of all these different places, right? But then you're like, man, that is just so far away from home. Like, I'm going to go over there. What am I going to say? I'm going to sit in the bank, you know, me looking like this and then be like, hey, uh, I would like a uh, more, uh, I would like to know about your instruments for international transactions for large uh, amounts of capital uh, coming from fiat into whatever those instruments actually are. They're going to be like, OK, sir, hold on. <laughs> and they come back, you know, when you've been waiting too long, you know, something wrong. And some other some other people show up, and say, hey, come with us. This is the, generally how it is out there. Now, cryptocurrency erases all that. Done. Like you got Coinbase, which we're going to jump on the computer real quick and show people how you get started with actually buying cryptocurrency. What is the process? It is something that you need to start now because it even takes a month or two to actually get all your, your system set up to where you can even purchase cryptocurrencies on the fly. And then in between time, if you choose to research this and dig into it a little bit more, if there's something that you see that's coming, you hear on the BBS board that is really gonna be hitting to buy in now, it's only 50 cents or whatever, then you're like trying to get your account together right then. It ain't gonna happen because it takes some time because of all the, the issues that have been dealt with within the past, especially in relation to fraud. So meaning that they slow it up a little bit, the transactions when it comes to getting authenticated from a fiat currency side into a cryptocurrency. So I'll give more details on that in a minute. So just remember what we're talking about is the birth of a new God. Lo and behold, what creates a God? Think about that. What creates a God? Of course, I'm going to answer that question for you. We're going to take a break real quick, but I'm not done. I have a little bit more. I just want to give everybody the opportunity to drink some water. <laughs> also, look, to breathe, to breathe a little bit. You know, when you find yourself looking for your pen, but it's in your hand, that's when you know you need to take a break. <laughs> it's like, where's my pen? Where are you? <laughs> what creates a God? That's how gods are created. It will always be that way. Anything that we've learned to trust in, man, we trust in those damn cows. It's like, yo, that cow not moving, we're done. Hopefully just keep going, just keep going. That is the God we trust. Like these weapons don't work, this shit bends, this stuff is not sharp, we ain't gonna win this war. We trust that gold. It's like, no, I can't hit the wormhole like this. I need to monetize this a little bit more and put this in monatomic. See, monatomic, monetize. Let me monetize this a little bit more, synthesize. Okay, you ready? Get the priest to bring down the jet. All right, look, it looks like the parallax is set straight. Orion tilted right. Yeah, we're just using that as a keto. Okay, bam, you ready? All right, let's go. <laughs> and it's, I mean, you, do you think it wasn't going on? Like, look at what, how the entire structure is configured. You can do this on the beach with DMT. You, you can get somewhere. So imagine you're sitting inside of an entire, you're, you're standing right at the gate of the wormhole. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, it's automatic from there. But what I'm saying is, what creates it? is trust. Because even then, when you go on that journey, you got trust. <laughs> it's like, yo, I, I trust these nobles right now. But everything is hinging on trust. And right now, fiat currency doesn't have trust. That's why every time something crazy happens, the price of cryptocurrency goes up. Because people get more afraid, like maybe the bank's not gonna be there. How they gonna pay back that 300 billion did they estimate it at that? They just come up with numbers. The Chicago, 300 billion, or, or Texas, Houston, right? That was the goal. The, actually, that ch Chicago was to fix the, the crime problem, 300, <laughs> 300 billion. Like, is that high enough? No, uh, not high enough. Come back. All right, so Houston, 300 billion, whatever. Some crazy number. I don't even know if it's 300. Something crazy to pay that back. Puerto Rico, 
Man, they just, they, what did, what, did, uh, what did the idiot say? He said, man, we've been spending a lot of money on Puerto Rico. I mean, we got to hold off for a minute. Like, here's some paper towels. You see what I mean? So all of that, where is that money coming from? How can they can't even print the machine fast enough? But see, now you also got, got another situation going on because people are taking their money and they're putting it into cryptocurrency. So they're not even actually getting it back is what I'm saying. Like it's all going into another world that they can't actually say, oh, we're coming in there to take that money. So this is why this is something you got to pay attention to because it's going to change the world. Just like a, a while ago, you would have had some people when you were trying to tell them about the Internet, if you knew everything about it. And you're like, look, Ida Mae, why don't you go and buy, I don't know, sweetpotato.com. Let's just buy that. Like you, why don't you go and buy, I don't know, flag.com. It's like they were like, all that computer stuff, that, that's just, you think people are going to really do it like that. You think people are going to really get fascinated with being in front of some machine. So this is what the conversation you will hear. And lo and behold, everybody who came in, just like in the beginning, remember, this is no different than the internet. In the beginning, there were thousands, hundreds of thousands of companies. If a company just put .com on the back of their name, if they were already established company, like Ace Hardware, .com, 500,000, 500 million went up on the shares. People like, Ace Hardware is going to be online and then they're going to start making money because they're going to sell tools to everybody online. But Ace Hardware was always too expensive. So when, you know, all the rest of them came and wiped them out, but it didn't stop Ace Hardware from making $500 million at that point. So you're going to see a lot of that in the crypto world. You're going to see people go all the way to the top. But then after a while, those Googles, those Yahoo's who's still barely hanging on, those Ebay's, those are going to be the only ones still remaining. And if you hold any of those coins, and these are now just popping up. Remember, it's not, this is still some time out. It's time to get in where you can get in at $100 buys you like lots of the coins. It's not worth anything now. Two years, you're sitting on 30000 40000 just from that $100. Remember, this is also, these are not coins in the sense of how you understand money. These are technologies. That's why you got to remember it, that this is a technology and stop thinking about what cryptocurrency translates back into in cash. It's like, <laughs> it's like a, 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 a wander. <laughs> hold on, hold on. I had a good analogy here, but it's basically like looking back. I call it looking back. So there's lots of scriptures. Delilah, the wife of Lot or whatever, she looked back, she turned to salt. It's like there's a, you know, you, you free some people, they keep looking back to eat. They look it back and like, yeah, let's go back. I don't, I don't, are we sure we're going to make it out here? I think I'm going to go back. So this is the mindset of like trying to figure out, well, how much is that going to be in money? Can I transact with those? The answer to that question is yes. You can actually buy cryptocurrencies and then transact back into any currency such as US dollar, et cetera, with a card. So, you know, that kind of demystifies a lot for people because sometimes they think they don't have that much money anyway. You know, if you didn't learn all this already. So they got a little bit of money. So they're like, well, shoot, I'm not I don't want to like put my money somewhere where I can't spend it right away. So you can actually even spend your crypto dollars right away by having the right kind of integration. So just remember, this is more trustworthy. Why? Because it's operating on a code that can't be frauded. So there's never going to be in the Bitcoin. It's going to be like pirate bait. It's just going to be able to get rid of it. It's not set up like that. And that's why the Nakamoto code, again, is so massive is because it's not set up to be tampered with and to just be treated. They've got to you got to create all of that. And that's why coins that are coming out that are saying even if they hint that they want to start implementing that kind of oversight automatically people are like, nah, nah, that ain't what cryptocurrency is about. I ain't, if y'all trying to have peers and people looking at, uh, uh, no, I, I don't want to, I don't want that. I'd rather buy. And there's now 2000 coins, at least like we said, 2020, I want to buy, I'll buy that coin because that's exactly what they're against. So you see like everyone is very cautious in this field and it's very, it's brand new. So again, you learn like a checklist of things to watch out for. You always stick by your guns and you do really well. So last but not least here, Woo. Now we got to talk about how it works when you, you got to now do this, right? Because somebody go drag you through a damn conversation. You know, we were everywhere. We cried, we laughed, we shared, we did everything. So now it's about, well, how do I do it then? Because that's what I'm about. I'm a doer, right? So we're going to get it done. So now we're going to switch up here really quick to the computer. Before we uh, completely go in, I'm going to switch it now and let it run. I'm going to take about a five minute just to refresh myself. We can go ahead and switch that now over to the uh, to what we're going to talk about. And what we're going to get into here is we're going to get into exactly what the process looks like for you coming into this from different angles of how you're going to make your current. 
because there's something for everybody. Because I know a lot of people back there thinking right now, like, oh, man, but I don't, you know, it take money to make money. And I definitely, you know, this is cool and everything, but you, am I going to have to put some money somewhere? There's different ways in this. There's even a way to actually take your computer right now and start mining coins. And, you know, you may not be mining a lot of coins, but you can even grind from there. So this is, I could take, if I was on my last leg, I'll take the library's computer. <laughs> like, yo, I'm mining from the library. So anyway, we're going to get into that in just a moment. But we're going to go ahead and give a moment for, uh, for us all to take a, uh, a quick breather. Wholeness and balance vibrations. And thank you for taking the opportunity to look at this video because it will change your life. Today, I'm just here for a brief moment to tell you about something that's amazing and we call it open source wealth. Have you ever been out and trying to get your life together, working on your success, doing it exactly like the book says, and all of a sudden success doesn't happen? What's really going on? And then in a reality that's driven by finances and resources, when you're even looking to do great things and you don't have those resources, what happens to your vision? So me and my team decided after seven years of pioneering some of the highest levels of advanced knowledge to demystify the entire wealth situation and open up open source wealth. And very briefly, I'm going to tell you about open source wealth and how you can be involved. Let's just face it. Every time you go out here and you try to actually do something, there's all these other moving parts to it. You can't just go and sing if you sing very well. You can't just go and start this, create this electronical device or create this expansion for humanity. You have to know how to do web programming. You have to know how to do marketing. You have to know how to do so many things. So what we've done is we've taken all of the systems that are in the world and how things work, and we've looked at some of the deepest levels of how to market how to actually speak to people, how to connect with people, what are people missing? And we've created something to where you can actually connect with the five major points of what we say is open source wealth. And that's one, tribe. You're going to need that connection. If you're isolated, you're all by yourself, you're going to need someone to say, hey, this is what I'm doing. I would like to expand it more. What are you doing? Someone that's going to come in and give you solutions where you may have problems and also where you can lend solutions and feel that inclusion of the power and the knowledge that you've already gained. Tribe, we can give you training. Training not just about, hey, this whole broad field of dumping a bunch of packets on you and, cur and, and curriculums that make it seem like we know what we're talking about. No, real stuff for 2017 that's going to allow you to point and click and get to exactly where you want. This means that all of that whole thing about, hey, well, what's going on in the matrix and how do I push the right buttons to actually get the results that I'm looking for? This is where those answers are and it's been tried and true. The next thing that you get is actually the products and the materials necessary to make it happen. Let's just face it, everyone's not a graphic designer. Everyone doesn't know pay-per-click and pixel and all this stuff that goes on out here. But what we have is we have professionals that know that and they're giving that knowledge into the system. Knowledge that's already been tried and true to turn over and do what it's supposed to do. And then we're passing that knowledge over to you so that way we're not making it hard on you. Because this is what I found to be the biggest issue within jobs, within and every single, a lot of the things that you see out here that supposedly success is connected to is you find, these comp, you find this competitor, this competition, even within your own boss, your own employees, et cetera. It's like a competition driven field. Well, we've decided to change that. We are pushing with each other to expand each other. And there's nothing like this right now out here. So you get opportunity to be involved. And most importantly, you get endorsements. I've seen thousands of channels on YouTube with great content. People do an amazing thing with music, etc. But just no views. Why? Because it's a syndicated world. It's even a world where if you don't know the algorithms, if you don't know the titling, if you don't know the times to post and to do what it is that you need to do, you get no visibility. So not only do we actually demystify that for you, we're giving you the formula for that. We also connect you with people that can be your, become your clients. Hundreds and thousands of people that actually need what you have. And our products that we carry, we have over 40 to 50 products are so dynamic that it blows away anything right now in the holistic and wellness industry. And that's not where we stop. We're still building more. Yeah, we're actually pioneering not only open source wealth, we're creating a device that actually programs water. We have several devices after that that can completely morph a field in the reality to produce abundant energy. So this is just the beginning. 
and we're inviting you to the beginning. Now, you can stay there and watch and see how it all grows or you can get on this right now and actually be a part of that growth. There's two levels to this. You could go to the ambassador level right away and start connecting with the group. If you just want to peek in a little bit more and see what's going on, start to become a spirit tech. Sign up. It's free. I want to say wholeness and balance vibrations to you. We're here. We're doing this. We're with you right now. And this is something different. So just peek in, take a little bit more of your time and see how we made wealth open source and see how your your time can now be spent the way you want it. And that word work quickly becomes fun because you can utilize this to not only propel you through the world, but also connect you with others that are in those spaces and doing amazing things just like you. It's really one of those times to to get just completely educated again about not just cryptocurrencies, but also how life rolls and it still requires you to really learn certain things about your your um, your event <laughs> of, of what's actually happening. And then once you crack that and that's like in your DNA, which is like your your own coding system. From that point, you're like, OK, I got that now. Pat. We don't need to die anymore. We don't need to, you know, go off into doing this X, Y, Z. That's wisdom. Right. So the world is full of knowledge. The symbol of knowledge is a snake. Uh, you know, it's honestly all these symbols. Is, they're like they're so telltale to what they actually mean, because, man, it's like, let me just, you know, I got to do a quick cipher real quick. Let me see exactly where our panel is. Like, if you look at this, they say that this symbol right here. This is like one of the, the master symbols on the dimension. My, my marker is giving up. So let's see how this works. <laughs> so the mas this master symbol in this dimension, is, they have it like this, right? And what's here, they say, is a snake, right? So this is like a code. This is a code. Anytime I see these kind of things, it's like I don't even be thinking what other people will be thinking about this symbolism because they don't even know what it means. So they could only guess. But when you have read all the knowledge and you've studied it and you've lived it, there's no more guessing. So this snake is actually a symbol for two things. Passion and knowledge. The reason why is, is that, see, up here, this is one thing, and down here, this is another. And the only thing that they really have going on for each other is that they're not alike. So this keeps them from coming together. This is kind of everybody's story on a microcosmic level, okay? the spirit and the soul and all those different things. There must be something that functions as the glue, the bridge. And that's why I was saying the most key point to always be is right in the center of your conscience, the arbitrator, not the one who's always right, not the one who gets left, but the one that's right there in the middle. Because in this arbitration point, what happens is, is that the reason why this symbol is the passion is because passion like that still wanting to unite with the opposite, right? Like this, these are symbols for phi. Right. So wanting to unite with that opposite. The passion has to be there and we know about the passion, so we don't got to go too deep into that. And then see where the knowledge comes in is what you learn because of your passions. <laughs> don't our passions get us into the craziest scenarios? So that's where this knowledge comes in. But then there's one more and it's called wisdom. <laughs> Because this means that you've actually begun to apply this and now it's turning into something. So you see how just that symbol alone could be completely misinterpreted by a person who, and this is all matrix code right here, like this. See, when we're talking about outside of the matrix, it doesn't mesh with this code. That's why people don't know what happens. They think that everything comes from somewhere, and it doesn't. That there's an infinite of something never born from anything. People are like, what the? It doesn't comprehend here. It's a whole nother code. You would need to unload this and then reload that. But while you're here, you can actually master this code by the realization of these uh, of these different levels of knowledge and teachings, which, of course, is always one of the things that we're getting to in the university. So with that being said, actually, I was up there also to explain very briefly, just so you understand. So this makes sense what we're going to look through right now. What exactly an ICO is? Because this is like the course that everyone needs to have that they didn't get. And I didn't get it either, so I didn't get it. <laughs> Literally, I just didn't get, I didn't understand companies and things like that from one level, which is a key level. A key level is, is that you know how, see, we're honest people. Like, we want to do the best that we can. We want things to work, 
okay? So let's say, for instance, if we take an investment, let's say you have a company, okay? And you're going to take an investment. Most of the time, this is going to come from your family. It's going to come from your friends. It's going to come from the people around you that believe in you, okay? So you don't want to cheat them. You want them to get their money back. So there's a lot of weight on an entrepreneur when they're trying to start a company to that first. Am I, do I feel like my idea is good enough to pay these people back? Because I definitely don't want to let them down. So that's the first hurdle most people have to launch in a business. That's actually for good people, good business people. That's one they never really make it over because you got another person or, or, or way of being out there that they basically will create a company Knowing the company is trash, <laughs> knowing it's selling the cheapest, most rottenest, worst stuff, okay? And not even have a moralistic bearing about that at all because there's another thing. Because we believe that, well, still technically for a company to be successful, they need somebody to buy their stuff. So if they're selling bad stuff, nobody would buy it. Well, what happens is, is that, and then also, and if nobody buys it, then they're going to go bankrupt. Misconception. This is what happens. See, when an IPO starts, let's just say, I got to come up with a name that's not another name. Candarthia. <laughs> okay. So let's say this IPO, a public company, an international public company, or is going to become one called Candarthia, <laughs> decides that they're going to go public. Right. They're going to now start asking everyone for money. You would think that, well, the only way can Darthia can actually become worth a lot of money is if they make a good product. No, it's actually based on how many people know about Candarthia. It's based on the, the, the marketing that's done. The you know, there's people that they use different techniques. So that was like, let's make a craze for it. Then say it's not available anymore. Then bring it back then they go through whole processes of how they know they're going to launch something. The core of its fundamentals of what it does doesn't even matter. <laughs> That's actually how the, this whole marketing angles and all this stuff is set up. It's like at the end of the day, it could be a crummy product, but this IPO can go through the roof because everyone believes that Cantharthia, based on these commercials, based on how many people say you got to get into this stock. And that's what's driving up this value. OK, now this means that the money that was initially invested into Candarthia, when the people that know business invested it, they knew they were never going to get that money back. OK, meaning that when they gave 100,000, 200,000 or whatever into that company, a real investor knows technically you're never going to get your money back like that. Like they're going to start selling a lot of things and you're going to see the money. They're going to you're going to get your money back if they're capable of selling who they are to the rest of everybody else. And they want in, too, because that's going to drive the price of what you have up. And this is called holding. So that's how they have a portfolio. You have shares and you're holding all these shares because you're trusting that there's going to be more punched into the company to make it more um, make it more lucrative, make it more valuable. So this means, of course, for a real business person, what they're really not even looking at anymore is the product. This is why it's so hard to get a good product out because they're not even looking at the product. They're like, how many people do you already have? What kind of brand? Did, what kind of branding did you do? Like, let me see your picture. Let me see your merch. Let me see your white people. Let me see your. And it's like everything that doesn't have to do with actually what you created. It's all the like, let me see the machine behind it. Who's working with you? Let me see your LinkedIn people. Let me see them on LinkedIn. Let me see how many people they're connected to. That's how they're coming at it. And they don't care. They don't give a shit about the product. So this means that IPOS has made thus far for entrepreneurship a shitty business. It's basically made people actually have to produce the worst, like even to have the merch, some of the stuff that this stuff says, it's just basically bottom feeders because this world never has had much potential. Not only is it extremely difficult to create something in the first place, then it's also, if you ever went to this level, this means that they've already basically had to sit down with you and like, but hey, you know, all, it's inside. Basically, that's what they call it, ins insiders, right? That's what they say they supposedly caught uh, 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 Martha Stewart for. Insiders that are saying, hey, you know, Ken Dorothy is about to go public. Why don't you go ahead and position yourself? They're going to have an initial offering. And then now you got a bunch of people in. Then it goes public. Then now you're just hearing about it. You just buy it. And that was just what I explained to you before. First day, mm, next day, mm, or next few weeks or whatever. So 
this is that world. That's that world of how business has always functioned. The, the world that many people, unless they're actually entrepreneurs and you start having to pay taxes, that kind of thing, are not too familiar with. But the top feeders, the real sharks, and there's some sharks out there. They train each other. They got shark training out there now. So they train each other. Yeah, it's definitely not about the company. Who gives a damn about the product? It's all about your Ferrari and blah, blah, blah. And they go in on a whole nother level that's foreign to us. So thus we have not prospered in their world. And their game is rigged, meaning that also still behind the scenes, even something tomorrow, like if you put 200,000 on, you think it's going to go somewhere on your side of the screens, it didn't. And on different different places, you know, it's like it's highly prone to fraud. So now what an ICO is, is a utility in the same respect that each of these companies are saying, OK, we're making dolls that children will love. We're um, creating a battery that has less efficiency. We're, you know, so every single, just like there's IPOs, ICOs are saying, hey, we're creating our utility for specific things, okay? So also this ICO, just like the IPO, goes public and then it starts to offer other people the, I, the opportunity to buy into these coins at that percentage, okay? So this is what we're talking about, all right? So one second, one second, we're not going to close it down here. I just want to take a look at my notes. I want to clear this up. All right. And I just want to make sure that's clear, because other than that, you know, for a real thinker, the next thing that's going to come to their mind is like, OK, so all these different IPOs and uh, or ICOs and these coins, what are they doing? How are these people just starting up something from nowhere? That doesn't actually sound solid to me. And that's why I was saying 95 percent of it is actually not as solid right now. But you got like this is still so early. It's like the luck of the draw. Sometimes just by being there. You know, that's called being in the right place at the right time. You can actually end up, maybe they started off as, you know, hey, we're just going to go grab these few million dollars. Uh, us, you know, because you see a lot of people getting together, that a lot of tech heads, a lot of people, again, they have some semi-qualified uh, LinkedIn profiles. There's literally a criteria of becoming a successful ICO that's really more superficial, like what the first page needs to look like. It obviously has to be designed very well because it's talking about code. It's like basic things that have so little to do with the utility because the utility is the unique part. That's the real idea. So just like with anything else, if you don't have a, a unique idea person or state of mind, you kind of create something that everybody else is creating. And that's actually where a lot of ICOs actually happen to find themselves. Their utility is basically the same as other. Oh, secure, sending, non-decentralized, and they did the same thing. Why some of them, like Monero and others, are unique in different ways, and that's what you need to be paying attention to. Because you got some people that are not that in that five percent, they like they are really intelligent already. They get it. They've been through night after night of realizing that, hey, there is something to this. It is working. So and they've been in four or five years. So they've watched it. OK, it's working. Like for me, when I uh, got a hint on it uh, again, it was only about, I guess, two, three months ago. And then, you know, it just start coming up in my dream field and somebody mentioned it to me. And then all of a sudden I was like, OK, let me take another closer look. And then when I took a closer look, personally, it brought me to tears. And, you know, I'm not, you know, somebody they see me cry today. I was like, yeah, OK, what's that? He's crying again. No, it, it brought me to tears because I have personally worked just me. This is something I'm doing still in my own being all the self. Seven years, almost 16 hours a day to push something that I know is going to happen. And to me, the only thing that measures when it's going to happen is how much I can push. And I will say that just because we launched off on this level of manufacturing, it's been amazing like to be able to create Fiaqua and all these different things that I've explored and what I've learned and all that. It's amazing. I, I'm not desisting on that. But I'm also still, I have like a real quantum mainframe going on back there. So it's saying, you know, it's not even telling me, hey, based on these calculations, you still know that, you know, in the time in which you need to be in a position, you'll still be that much more still behind another alternate reality that is not going to go the way that you ultimately can see this. You need to move faster. Let's give them some wings. And it's because like we all are collectively projecting something. So at some point it should come flying through. It's like, yeah, it's coming. It's like your, your, your autonomous car. You didn't call it like Kit. It's like, okay, I'm out front. You know, it's been a middle of time. It's like, yeah, it's coming. Don't worry about it. And this is what I feel like this kind of system is. It's like, okay, it's wings. 
because now you don't got to like go try to go to China. Like I was saying earlier, international banking. Now you're in China trying to set something up. It's just you. You're coming in there. They're looking at you weird. You're six foot towering over everybody. It, it doesn't connect. You see what I mean? So the thing is, is that now this is removed. No one can come into this thing and like I'm even still a novice at the level that I'm at I'm just absorbing it rapidly but no one can come into this just because they came from somewhere else to now profess to know like so much about it, like a George Soros or somebody that actually has a lot of power in the fake matrix but then coming into this it's like your cred comes from a whole different thing your cred comes from the uniqueness of utility that you can create your cred comes from true trust because trust actually creates what God it basically creates what we can anchor to. It's like, okay, this one's stable. This is what we did with Earth. It's like, I can plant seeds here. It's stable enough. It <laughs> looks like it's the earthquake, hurricanes, earthquakes every now and then, but this is, looks like enough to where we can grow something. Like, we got to think about the beginning of this, about what we agree to be doing here and what this is all about, because all that draws nigh, meaning that it is a really reap what you sow. You plant it out in the field during the day, which is like the beginning of the new moon, already grumpy you start off and then all of what you're now reaping from that point then full moon you're going to reap your harvest it is like it's guaranteed it doesn't run on the same mechanics as this faithless system that they got going on a false trust in a god that we don't know so this is what also you can start an ICO. this ain't th we're going to talk here and get deep into this about getting involved but just directly, once you understand utility, if you're hearing it from me, like I'm not going to tell you to go and start some crap, like not as a reflection of who we are. Do your research. Start reading. I'm going to show you some websites. You could check the stats of every ICO launching out. You can read what is their utility so you even get an idea of what the hell is a utility on a blockchain. But also realize that this is not too far from where you're at as far as understanding. So for a moment, you'll be like, man. I don't know, but then start thinking, well, I always wanted to be the bank. <laughs> like, I am Paymaster. I said, if I ever rap, I'm going to call myself Paymaster. Don't take my name, but Paymaster will be there. Like, you're like ATM just throwing out cryptocurrency. So here we go. Uh, let's go to this now. And we're going to look deep into it. Now that you understand ICOs, what are you looking at first? And let me do this in my methodical order in which I wrote it down. So... What you're looking at first, and let me go here, and we're going to go to our great site, Bitrix. It will take you some time uh, to get um, signed up for, but um, it, you'll be able to. So let me see something real quick. Um. <laughs> okay, what's going on here? How do I get into Bitrix? Where is it at? Okay, there it is. That's what I'm trying to get to. Okay. Okay. What we're looking at is we're looking at an exchange, a cryptocurrency exchange. And I'm not here to go through all of these coins with you today. Like you can call my man the boss of Bitcoin, Brandon Kelly. You can actually, somebody can add Brandon Kelly who has him as their friend. I'll actually do it in the chat box in just a second. Let me see if I can get it real quick. Man, check out the brother like he really took me into a crash course of, you know, what it was about. He made me see it another way. I felt like he was, he was really, really connected. And, uh, you know, just from the level of, um, you know, you just you know when people are real. That's it. You know, we have a real sensor. <laughs> so, you know, I linked up with the brother. He really gave it to me from every single angle. And I sat with him as, as far as on the consultation. He's got some stuff on his site, you know, super inexpensive, you know, just to, Get yourself, uh, you know, aware of what kind of coins are moving in what direction. You can also do, again, a consultation with him. And then he's got this method that he's using called the boss method because he's the Cristo of cryptocurrency. I love the way he says it. And basically this method is watching these markets like the Fibonacci sequence because these are real people. This is not a machine like this is not see like when you got these shareholders in stock, you don't know where that stuff is. It's been traded and flipped over and all this. This is somebody's wallet of what they have. So you buy up the amount that's in that wall. This is as you go deeper into this site. When you go in and buy coins, you'll be actually buying them out of somebody's wallet. Still, so just imagine you got that kind of transparency. And then because we're real people, you'll watch the market move. And that's what uh, Brandon is saying is about the market really moves based on how people move with their energy and what they think is going on. 
and I guess the, one of the last drivers to the market that I think is rapidly going to stop becoming so relevant is actually Bitcoin. And it's just because a lot of coins are still dependent on Bitcoin status. Like if Bitcoin goes up, coins kind of do well generally. But again, none of those are exactly in stone because you'll see coins that when Bitcoin goes down, those coins are going up. So the logic to why is actually in understanding the utility. It's not, you know, it's, it's a few different things. You know, you, you want to find as many ways as possible. One, you can read the Fibonacci. You can read the, the, uh, the stat statistics of how it's moving. Two, you can understand it as a, as a utility and what it actually is doing. And then you can also go to uh, boards that they do nothing but talk about this because, you know, you don't also have your time. I know a lot of people don't have time to sit on this all day, but you can get added to groups. We obviously have ambassador training. We're talking about it there. I'm pushing it out as much as I can just in, you know, in moderation to also what else is going on. And uh, but we have a clear pipeline to this progressive movement of not only understanding this, but also understanding how this can work for all of us as a community and all of us as a tribe. So this first aspect, again, that I'm showing you is that you're seeing, again, where the, the trade here. And so you're not looking necessarily at a gambling house. And so you got to really make sure your mind clicks with understanding that, that this is not like when you're looking at uh, E-Trade or whatever. And then you got all you got these companies hooked to this computer and they're all this centralized system. Hell no. That's actually how it gets tampered with. Right. Like now we're talking about trust. Like maybe let's, let's just be benefit of the doubt. Maybe they're not doing that. But why do I got to trust that they aren't? And there's another word that's used in cryptocurrency, which is key that you remember. It's called trustless. When I first heard that, I, I took it wrong. I was like, hold on, hold on. Trustless. Wait a minute. I don't know if I want to be involved in something that's trustless. And then I was like, hold on, slow, hold on, slow down, cousin. Let me hear what's being said. Trustless means I don't have to trust you. The, the mechanism doesn't, is beyond that. You don't ever have to question yourself in your mind. Is, is, is he really going to do it? Or is he really not going to do it? Or are they really going to be able to allow me? Once you understand the utility, it doesn't require you to actually trust that the utility is going to work because the code makes sure that it works. So that's why a new word called trustless then gets created. And then that word, let me just readjust my camera here real quick. But that word actually becomes the true essence of, uh, let me just anchor this this way. That word actually becomes a true essence of where you really want to be. And, uh, and what I mean by that is that I don't really want people to have to go into their monkey mind to determine if they trust me or not. Like are they, people have been through all sorts of wild situations, right? So when they're looking at you and they're like, should I really trust him or uh, should I really trust him? Is he really the truth? And is it the, it's like they go through all this thing and most of the time they end up short circuiting themselves. We get in our own way. So there becomes a judgment and then we decide not to get involved with it, even though it was like a massive thing. Like somebody can judge me and say, well, you know, hey, but he doesn't like Santa Claus and I, mm, I just can't. Anyone who doesn't like Santa Claus must be evil. So then they like, and if he's talking about cryptocurrency, then cryptocurrency is evil. So this is kind of like the association that the monkey mind seems to make with its fuzzy logic of how it's putting together that it knows everything already and that it's really, you know, that's what I say. You got to make a sober estimate of yourself every day so you don't imagine you're more than who you really are, like, or else you're for, you forfeit your own recovery, right? And then on top of that, an alcoholic, you know, if you want the road to recovery, you got to say that you're drunk. If you don't want to admit that, hey, maybe you've been caught with your pants down. Maybe you've been hypnotized a little bit. Maybe you think things are one way and they're really not. Maybe you need to reanalyze the entire thing that you think you are. Get rid of it after you, you which you have to defeat it and then go ahead and go on to your next thing and fly out of your new fly into your new spatial because that's what you would really be doing. And it's already there. So understand it from this way. Let's keep going. Getting into that new spatial, you still got to catch the bridge, though, right? And that bridge is what? Money. A whole lot of spending money to do it right, child. It is a serious thing. Like, at the end of the day, these organics are expensive. So even, like, trying to eat right and all this stuff, it's just like, okay, in a declining economy, you almost have to, like, basically go to whatever it is, we go to whatever it is that you're actually doing, basically. It's like, you know, <laughs> that's what it is. So anyway, this next level of this, and let me just take a drink here, a sip, is to understand that this is not a gambling house, okay? So if you do your research, you're in. 
if you want to get a little bit more risky, you're on your own. That's not what Uncle Seven said, <laughs> you know, but there is some bona fide what we call the dream team. And if you already got your ear to the ground, you understand your utilities, you know, a little bit of money, hundred dollars here, hundred dollars there. You know, you want to do it anyway. You mean, mean that you want to actually feel like you're now doing what you know you're supposed to be doing, investing, <laughs> like not just letting it either sit there or you're just spending it all on the next fix, the next gadget fix they come out with, you know, iPhone 900. So this is the thing. It's like you can watch the money go there and then it, it will start to build. But also remember, if it just stays where it is when you first buy it, that's good enough because you're just simply moving your money out of the hands of the crib keeper. <laughs> right. And, and you're, let, you're releasing it into the hands of you're now the bank. It's like, OK, I can, I can hold my own now. I can hold my money. We can move it over here so that you're not looking at it and, 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 and doing all your weird stuff with it. So here's the next thing. And remember, it's not also just about your own profits and things. It's also building a new level of consciousness that's possible. Right. So even if I buy 10 coins of something cheap, I'm still ultimately investing in the sovereignty of the current flowing through my world. So the more that I have over in one world that actually has some responsibility and less leakage, because th that's what we talked about before on how the, you know, the, the monetary karma, which is like, well, what did the boss do with the money before he gave it to you? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like just, you know, all of that extra holding with that currency, right? So this is the chance to also vacuum all of that out of the dimension. Think about the metaphysical aspects of this, right? So again, there's also, uh, you got low investment, high return possible in here with your research. And you also have low risk with your research. Like sometimes, you know, you see something and you was out, you was out of the beach, whatever. You missed the entire week, the coin and went 5,000%. Now it's recovering from that and because you were out, you're still holding that coin. So now it's less than what you even bought it for. Don't panic. If you had already done your, your investigation, next week is going to be back to at least to where you bought it. And then it's going to start making that climb from there. And that's what Brandon is talking about, that that whole process is generally more on the Fibonacci sequence because people are like, they move on like this real instinct. It's like once they buy something, they're like, yeah, I'm going to hold it. They're like, OK, it's getting up to three dollars, getting up to three dollars. I should just pull my money right now. I should just pull my money right now. So, you know, they just go into this weird thing. And because, again, they're just they're using it as a form of profit. So that's why we're going to talk about today about, yes, it's a profit again, but it's also, you know, putting your money out of the system somewhere where it actually will be if something happens to the system. But and then ultimately putting your egg in a better basket so that it actually can grow into something or has the potential to grow into something. And then the icing on the cake, it's not even like if you need to go and do something with what's there, you just cut off from the system so you can't get your money back into the system. You actually can. So speaking of that. I got to talk and it's not in my notes here, but I got to talk real briefly about, OK, so here's the deal. You know, I know a lot of people are joining from the U.S. I know somebody that's in a specialist Lincoln. You know, we have my son an affiliate link in there. Come on, guys. <laughs> so anyway, um, so I want you to think about this. So if we when you go, OK, so if you're living in the U.S., OK. And you have to go, let me see right here. What happens is, is that so obviously there are some people who did burn it out, like meaning that you know, the whole anonymity part of this whole thing and them not knowing who you are and all of that started becoming the biggest issue and stiflement actually to cryptocurrency for a certain level of things to kick off. And that's where people can start using it and then start being able to transfer it back into money. Because what was happening was, is that if they don't know who you are and they don't know who you're buying from or any of that, they don't know what kind of deal could be going on. So they can only assume the worst. So this was in the beginning, there were all these different um, currency exchanges, like what you're looking at right now here with Coinbase. And there's more, especially there's more availability for people who are outside the U.S. or saying they're outside the U.S., et cetera, for getting into different markets. But what happened was is that there became like this free for all, basically. And in this free for all, there was literally 
lots of exchangers and digital currency exchanges that were just starting up overnight. And this is how people started getting hacked because <clears throat> obviously if you're going through an exchange and you're using a crypto wallet, you know, long story short, there's a potential to get hacked if the site's not doing its proper security. So this became like a big thing is that, you know, another way to implement a little bit more control over everything so that everything's not super transparent, especially when things are coming from fiat, like as far as who's making that transaction, they started regulating other sites. And so they pretty much got it down into the internet to where if you're in the US or you, know, you just wanna stay, say that you're in the US, you have to use something like Coinbase at first to get your fiat into cryptocurrency. Now let me be very clear here, okay? This also depends on how much you're planning on trading in the first place. You're gonna trade $500, you can go and get a $500 money order. And actually there's some traders out there that will take that money order receipt or you can send it to them and they will give you current, put into a wallet for you, okay? So that's the, like if you just wanted to come in all the way completely. See right now there's no regulation, so you're not doing something illegal. We're not showing someone illegal, something to do illegal here. We're just putting them way up on game before there's any regulations. The biggest regulation that they've had is that Coinbase through one means or another, where it was buying, buying out other exchanges, l trying to levy certain um, um, requirements to other exchanges, like basically snitching on other exchanges, saying, hey, they don't have blah, 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 blah certification, so it should be known that they don't have that, so people know that their money is vulnerable, X, Y, Z. So at the end of the day, Coinbase, who's also GDAX, and probably a few other people, probably Poly Polyneix, but they end up buying up all of the exchanges to get fiat currency generally from a person living in the United States also wanting to connect their Bank America account and all that kind of stuff and to being able to buy cryptocurrency, that's Coinbase. Coinbase also has that app. Coinbase only really sells, I mean, not only really, but Coinbase only sells three coins, Bitcoin, Litecoin, and Ethereum, right? And so those are like, again, legacy coins. So with those coins, you can go and buy any other coin but when you want to go and buy those coins, you actually got to go and buy those coins from another exchange that's broader, like Bittrex, right? So Bittrex has all these coin, different coins on the market, and these are all wallets, so this is a bigger market to buy coins from, and this is what you're definitely going to need if you want to invest in some new coin that's coming out or some of the coins that are obviously not on uh, uh, Bittrex. Okay, so that's that. So this is one part of this. You can actually start to buy coins, monitor that whole thing. That's one way. So you basically become some kind of crypto trader, okay? <laughs> that sounds crazy, but anyway, that's the term. <laughs> so what happens is now there's another level to this that you can go into mining, right? So how this structure is set up basically is it's set up just like the old times of kind of thinking about how gold works. Okay, so gold need to be mined. The gold is then take it to the bank. It's exchanged for something that has value, mainly fiat. And the miner keeps moving from there. So there's a part of mining, or there's a part of this process of exchange that requires mining. I'm still getting deeper into all of what's being done through the mining, but to make it easy on your understanding, you could say it's also connected to the transactions that are being processed how fast those transactions can be processed. And because they're using a code, it takes some time for the computer overall power to transact this code, to basically update all the ledgers, et cetera. So what powers that to happen, or part of that is mining. So you're basically getting paid to make sure these transactions go through on certain levels. You can kind of understand it like that, okay? Now, mining has been going on for a while, and in fact, a lot of people have made millions on mining, especially early. Like, there were success stories, like guys that went off to college, first heard about Bitcoin, heard about how you can mine it, took their computers, one of their raggedy computers, put it in the basement, hooked it to some internet, started to code, put it on the screensaver, and just left it. Kid comes back after college, he's got 10,000 Bitcoin, that Bitcoin is worth 5 million, and then, and climbing. So there's a lot of success stories around just basically people who are the oddest people coming into it, having a large amount of wealth because they started off this way in mining. Right now, mining is actually now starting to hit a peak to where enough people know about it to where equipment, mining equipment, which is basically, uh, it's basically equipment that's specifically configured 
for, um, to mine coins, okay? There's different kind of mining, but we're not going to get into that. There's script mining, there's GPU mining, or ASIC mining. We're good right there. And, um, and so what you're looking at is this basically this machine is configured to mine coins. And so early in the game, even something this powerful, like you would be owning a lot of coins because it has that much power in it. But as with certain coins, because this is for people who are really looking to make money off mining, they need to have the strongest machine. So how this works is, and I'm trying to keep it from being complex, is that the more people that are mining, the more complex it becomes to mine. It's like another one of the fail safes in the system to keep it neutralized, not to mention the hash power or how much it takes to actually hash a block becomes more difficult. So this kind of like regulates it in a certain way. And now the greatest regulation is actually on the chips themselves, which you know China is producing the most of. That these, you can't even buy an ant miner right now. It says buy now, you go to the page, and you know whenever it gets there, it said, okay, so now they're actually allowing, but this is December shipment. So honestly, I may jump off the car with y'all right now. <laughs> At the car, nigga. It's time. But serious, like, it's that crazy. You're going to watch this within two days. They're going to be sold out again. Because there's people now that are even buying them, and they're just holding them to charge people more from later. Now, I will say, remember, that again, people are not actually making as much money on mining as it used to be. Oh, damn, I gotta demystify mining for everyone. Let me just see how the easiest way to do this. Okay, so right now there's a standard amount that you're gonna get paid for mining. So let's say for instance, that amount, last time I looked at the numbers is like, let's say uh, 600 and something dollars a month, okay? So you pay for this thing, if you get it on the pre-order, $1,700. So that means technically within three and a half months it would have paid for itself and then it's cash from there. And if minus, you know, where you're paying for electricity and all that. But it's, that's about as much as you would make if you get on it now before everyone else. Now, we can already assume there's going to be a November batch. I think we're in October. There's going to be a November batch. So there's gonna, the complexity is going to go up. So even that $600 of what you would make is probably going to be more down to $400 now. But still, the beauty of mining is there is still a quick ROI, return of investment, based on general investments. Also, you got the equipment there. You, you can't stay in the house. It sounds like a vacuum cleaner, so this is like a garage kind of thing. But you got the equipment, so your money's there. I'm still demystifying, but I'm pretty sure you can actually point an L3 Plus, which we just looked at. You can point it actually at other coins. So you can actually mine other coins. And if you kind of wanted a way to, like, instead of just keep buying coins, even though they're rather cheap, but keep buying coins, you just want to, like, have this endless coin making thing, this is what this is. And so you can actually, and I'm still digging a little bit deeper into this because I've had now a conflicting salesperson. And that's why, you know, I'm not sure if what they're saying is true because I've seen edgewise, but a conflicting salesperson is saying that an L3 ant miner can actually only mine one script, mainly Litecoin or something like that. But I've actually seen where some guy was saying that he, any script miner, which is what this is, can mine all script coins. And so there's still a little haziness in there, but there's also just direct script miners that can mine coins. So just to demystify the whole thing, this is how, this site right here is the hottest thing going right now, period, on the internet. Like I said, when I get off this phone, I'm gonna jump in because what happens is in about two, whenever it runs out, that it's gonna say no more, but then you're gonna see a lot pop up on eBay and they're gonna start off probably around $2,600 all the way to 5,000. There was even some guys just paying 5,000 for them. Some kid that's like, dad, we're gonna be miners again. And it's like, well son, what's the ROI? 12 months, do it. And it's like, cause that's, they're, normally they're coming from a world where you get 5% weird, like shysty numbers, right? So this is a hot thing, mining is hot. This is not the only way to mine though. From what I've seen, because you know, I'm not uh, personally in watching a lot of videos, yeah, exactly. I'm watching a lot of videos. You can actually, there's companies like, I think it's Bit, uh, yes, BitConnect. Okay, so like BitConnect and Genesis Mining. And what these companies are initially basically designed on is the idea that instead of like doing the mining from your house and being responsible for the electricity, the consistent internet and all those kind of things that you can hire a company to like, you could buy a block of like hypothetical equipment 
right, that they will basically lease to you with a contract and then you will make everything that that rig mines. And then they also have like some incentives, like if you let uh, if you get other people to join up underneath you and all this kind of thing. Now, BitConnect seems at this point so solid because people are really already using it. But on the back end, a lot of people are like, man, BitConnect, like they like have people overextended in attempts to how much their belief they're asking for. BitConnect, I think, was at 16 or something silly. It was like. 1.6 billion. Yeah, you can you can put me there. Or oh, anywhere, anywhere you feel is good. <laughs> so BitConnect is basically uh, seems to be like one of those things that are going to be a lot more long term because regardless of if a lot of stuff that is doing is a little bit shaky, there's so many people involved. It can carry out whatever they're doing for a more prolonged period. So this brings the key term that you should understand. Um, that's going to be thrown around sometime, which is a Ponzi scheme. For those that don't know what a Ponzi scheme is, it breaks down to basically paying somebody else with someone's money that's just coming in. So paying your people that came in, let's say three months early or three months ago with the people that are just coming in right now. And you just kind of keep funneling the money, but you're also taking a large amount of the money. And then eventually it blows up into like where everyone loses their money. And that's called a Ponzi scheme. So BitConnect has been accused of being a Ponzi scheme. And uh, and but that's kind of like common rhetoric, <laughs> meaning that this is basically a, a world with different type of people. Some of them with they just like they've been sitting in their house all y all year in a basement on a computer. So they ain't even seen daylight and they're now given a voice. So it's like you hear all sorts of things going on. You got naturally negative people. It's a brand new world with no police. So that's what you're dealing with. So, you know, so the thing is, OK, so you, so you have this cloud mining and this cloud mining is you got BitConnect, you got Genesis mining. And this is basically like you're buying machines like my main place that I would kind of like, you know, just to kind of steer away from all of the, the doubt. I would prefer if a person is looking at this kind of what they call like cloud mining. Um, but in this case, you know, it's just like you're seeing it through the cloud. You're seeing what your rig is doing. I will recommend NiceHash because NiceHash already has a reputation for if you have your own rig at the house, you can hook your rig up to NiceHash. And what it'll do is it'll it'll configure everything for you and it'll switch through the coins for you that are best to mine. So NiceHash is like the main site for that. And now it seems like NiceHash has started now offering for people to come in and buy uh, parts of it or parts of equipment mining equipment in this case. So this is uh, one of the things that you can actually look into and that's another level of it. So you have um, I'm just explaining every single route here. So you got your ant miners. You got which we just talked about. You got your online cloud mining. You got we're going to need to get into two different type of mining. We don't have to talk about that right now, but you have um, the ability to mine. OK, so and also you have the, the ability to mine. Once you get a rig, you have the, mine, the ability to mine pretty much any coin. Once you get on Bitrix, you have the ability to buy pretty much any coin. So the reason why I always say, because, you know, sometimes it's like looking at the miner, it's like the miner is obviously a no brainer. But see, in certain tenses, if you already have some cash rolling through, you already have some capital coming through. Let me switch that. And you don't have time to be like trying to managing a mining rig, which is still not super intense, but you know, you just don't want to deal with it all together. You live in an apartment. You can still basically it, it's only a little bit of your money to actually invest in some of the most uh, uh, um, best bets in the coin world right now. So if a person, so that's what I'm saying. You got to weigh it against that. You got to like if I if I got extra thousand, two thousand dollars coming in every month anyway, or ten thousand or twenty thousand. You know, if you want to start a mining operation, it's still going to be beneficial. You may be an investor, throw 20000 in a mining operation, get all your money back in four months, and then you're making a profit. Also, remember, the, the next push to this is you can, let's say, it could be making $600 a month now as it's quoted or stated. But if, you, if it starts rising up the coin, that $600 and that RI becomes drastically less. So this is something massive to, to realize. So last but not least here, because we're at the end, you got one more way. And this is not something that actually somebody uh, told me about or nobody told me about until just recently. And that was my my great friend Dins uh, in London. And what he bought up was also there is another way. 
<laughs> and it's called master nodes. This is for the person who also has really some capital to throw around in it. It thinks mining is a little risky or noisy and also doesn't like, you know, the whole day crypto trading thing. You can actually buy what's called a master node. So just to make this very simple, what it basically is, is you, you're buying enough coin to it for you to be actually relevant. So meaning, let's say BitCloud is right here, right? So BitCloud says that if you buy 10,000 coins, you will have one master node. And that master node, they're selling that node for $6,405 right now. It will make $62 daily, $434 weekly, $1,889 monthly, $22,667 a year. As long as BitCloud stays alive. And if BitCloud does better, these numbers go higher the time in which you reap your initial investment, $6,408 $6, comes back fit faster. It's that simple. And also, many of these coins give you a seat on the board. Because you're a major investor, when you buy nodes, remember, no, this one, Eternity is selling their nodes for $163 for the whole master node. So the thing is that, remember, current, some of these are like penny stocks, as what you would call them, to where they already have, they have just a small percent in there. But remember, it's still how much you invest. So if you invest $100 in a penny stock and it goes up 6,000%, you're paid out accordingly. So, but master nodes is another way to keep a portfolio. There's a little bit more to this. You kind of get like a master node server, I think Dens was saying. And that's basically like some equipment that just handles part of what you're doing. And they say also you earn extra for what you're doing. It's called gas. And it's because you're allowing the transaction to occur. Because let's say if you have 10,000 bit clouds and somebody wants to buy them, 5,000 of them, they don't have to try to consolidate 10 wallets to buy, to sell that. They can just go to the master node, which would be you. Like, yeah, he's got 10,000 coins on hand. We just need 5,000. We're going to do it through his system. And that's how that works. And then you get gas, you know, which is a, a, a slightly accruing amount over time because you're actually creating the transaction. So this is a whole nother level. And that's pretty much the ins and outs of it. Like, I think I did the best that I could to really like, <laughs> this was wild because we literally went from like a whole different thing, but I, I really feel again more than honored to be able to deliver it on this level. Obviously, I'm gonna, you're going to hear a little bit more from me about it. My job right now in my mind is to, to become efficient. So basically with this, meaning just to boil off all the extra, understand truly what controls the market. I know there's some people that are running around right now and they really want to seem like they're like all on something totally different and they know something nobody could know and all that and they're trying to protect it. But crypto ain't running like that, baby. Like it's something that you want to give freely because there's more than enough. Like you're talking about a new bank. And the thing is, is that think about it this way. When new banks open up in the world, actually, they're give, they give away money, but they call it a loan. <laughs> you see what I mean? In this world, it's an investment. And that's the biggest difference. More power to the people. So that's what I have to say. We'll uh, be getting with each other soon. I want to say to everyone, if you have not seen or heard about ambassador training is something you want to check out we got a tribe that is just amazing we're connecting every under, every other sunday at least we're building conscious entrepreneurship we're showing people how to keep developing what they're doing we're giving also levels of integration this kind of knowledge we're always looking for the the true vivid clear path to actually this sovereignty so we are very focused in doing that Super jubilant. It's been an amazing time. I'll be talking to everyone soon. Wholeness and balance vibrations. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the next generation of science. Is there any way in which one's mind can be?